Captain's log, stardate 57931.4. The crew is restless. After spending too many months piecing our ship back together, we're finally about to venture out on a new mission. And the crew isn't letting this unprecedented ion storm slow them down. They're ready for something different. I know I am. Perhaps more than any of them. Fortunately, nothing ever stays the same. It's entropy. The nature of the universe. Change is inevitable. And while entropy says order gives way to chaos, in this case, change is good. Our new first officer is en route to the Resolute, Jara Ryder. I know she'll bring a welcome dose of new blood to the crew. great with flying but these little shuttles are the worst you don't like flying and yet you join Starfleet there's a reason I'm not a pilot you should try it sometime sorry I'm a, I'm a little anxious I hadn't noticed. I'm on my way to my first assignment. When we get to the Starbase, I'm transferring on to the Resolute. So am I. It won't be easy for Jara to step in at the 11th hour like this. But if she's half the officer I knew she could become when she was a cadet at Starfleet Academy, she'll be the XO this ship needs right now. Star base on the very edge of Federation space. Long way from home now. I'm not usually such a nervous wreck, by the way. I actually did well at the Academy. Oh, yeah? Maybe you've heard of the Torvalon test? Sounds familiar. It's a tactical simulator that makes the Kobayashi Maru look like a picnic on Pintaris V. Anyway, I finished in the top 20. Not just in my class. I, I mean, all time. In the history of the Academy. So, there's that. Simulations are great for training, but they're not quite the same as the real thing. That's fair. I guess I'm about to find out. Please place your hand here. Hold it there for a few seconds.
Welcome, Commander Rydek. Wait, you're Jara Rydek? You absolutely crushed the Torvalon test. You, you finished in what, like the top three? That would be me. <laughs> now I'm really... It, it's an honor to meet you, Commander. Sorry, I, I didn't realize before. I, I just came off the shuttle and was glad to be on solid ground, so to speak. The pleasure is mine, Ensign... Paul Calloway. Good to meet you. I believe Commander Ermod is expecting you. He's in the concourse just ahead. See you on the Resolute. Good day, Commander. If I remember my briefing, Commander Ermont is a Bullion, so I'm looking for someone with blue skin. Are you all right? Yeah, I, I'm just... Well, I'm not sure where my departure dock is. The Resolute's gonna leave without me. Look here. The Resolute is leaving from this dock. Ah, oh, you're right. Nerves must be getting to me. Thanks so much, Commander. Starbase 128 has four docks. I'll replicate myself a meal once I'm on board. Excuse me. Welcome to the edge of the galaxy, Commander Rydek. I'm Commander Jan Ermot, Operations Officer on the Resolute. Commander? I hope there wasn't too much trouble getting here. This storm isn't making anything easy for us right now. I know conditions are less than ideal at the moment. It takes more than a little turbulence to rattle me. I'm sure that's the case. We're grateful you were able to come fill our first officer vacancy at such short notice. From everything I've read and everything I've heard, we're lucky you were available to us. Coming from a premier starship and all. To our little research vessel. What exactly have you heard about me? First in your class at the Academy. Received the Starfleet Award of Valor during the Dominion War. Most recently, Tactical Officer and Chief of Security on the USS Endeavor. You've done your homework? Like I said, we're very lucky. The USS Resolute. She may not look like much compared to the bigger ships, but as far as science vessels go, she can more than hold her own. And she doesn't look so bad, considering six months ago she was nearly cracked in half, venting plasma, fighting for her life. It was an accident? The equipment malfunction. An accident suggests fault, but no one's to blame. It was a planned test, but the warp core was pushed beyond its limits. It destabilized the dilithium, there was a runaway reaction, and the warp bubble deformed. 
We thought we could reach a higher resonant frequency, but it was more than she could handle. Cost us our first officer and 22 of our crew. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for each other. That's what it means to be a crew. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It does weigh heavy. There are some things you can't forget. Did you lose anyone close to you? Too many. And to that I'll just say, you have big shoes to fill. Listen, I realize you've known Captain Solana for quite some time, and I'm sure you're ready to bring your best. But I should warn you that when the Captain announced you would be the new First Officer, there were those who felt it was a mistake, that he should have promoted from within. So you might want to tread lightly at first. Until they come to value your contributions as much as he does. Thank you. Always good to have a sense for what you're walking into. I just thought you ought to know. I appreciate it. Starfleet has assigned us a high-priority mission to the Hotari region. I'll let the Captain brief you on board. I know he's eager to see you. Will we be mission ready in time? We have every intention. The crew has been working around the clock to get the ship ready. There's still so much to do. that. I thought the thing was totally fried. Nice work, Carter. Nothing to it, Nelly. And not a moment too soon. The boss wants us down in engineering. Like, now. sense in zero G. You're welcome. Carter Diaz. So clean I can see myself. And you know what? Not half bad.
Engineering. I heard the new Exo just arrived. Won't be long before we get underway. I just hope whatever Chovok called us down for, it's something good. I can never tell with him. I'd rather not end up degaussing plasma manifolds. Hanging upside down makes me queasy. Ah, uh, what's the matter, Nilly? Afraid of a little hard work? A little hard work? Really? A little? Six months of putting this ship back together is a lot of hard work. Yeah, and here we are. Just about ready to go. Looks like we got here before. Lieutenant Commander Chovak. We were just looking for you, Commander. County Officers Ed Salar, Diaz. I was beginning to think you would be late. We are all hands on deck right now, which means if you are not at your post at the appointed time, I do not have someone to replace you. A point I have been forced to make to Petty Officer Edzelar on repeated occasions. So you're saying we're irreplaceable, Commander? That is one interpretation. Another would be that I would replace you if I could. You can interpret as you see fit. So, I don't suppose you wanted us down here to check in before we go off duty? Equip yourselves in EV suits to work on the exterior of the hull. I need you to tune the structural integrity field for optimal performance. The subspace distortions and ionic interference we are experiencing are preventing the proper calibration. But this ship must be ready to depart shortly, despite the storm. The precise nature of these disturbances are not fully understood. But many systems have been affected by the wide band of emissive activity. Commander, if this energy storm is causing problems here at Space Dock, what does that say about what we're gonna find when we head out there for real? Shouldn't we let this storm pass? Long-range sensors show that conditions will indeed be more severe at our destination, the Hotari system. Thusly, we are taking all necessary precautions. You have your orders. Do not delay. Yes, Roger Commander Chovak. All hands on deck. Oh, uh, what's that? All hands on deck. That's what Chovok said. You know what that means? It means this ship isn't ready to go out and the brass know it. So they're throwing every warm body at it. And they're going to leave on schedule. Consequences be damned. You won't get an argument from me, Nelly. Sure seems like everyone's still scrambling. And I get it. When has a relaunch ever gone off without a hitch? But this isn't just any old refit or any old relaunch. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Excuse me. A lot of new faces coming on board. It's got to be tough coming as a replacement. That's for sure. Man, we've been through a whole hell of a lot as a crew. They're gonna have to prove themselves before they're really one of us. Yeah, you're right. Anyone could look serious in a clean uniform. Show me what you can do when everything's falling apart. Hold on. Now there's an old face I didn't expect to see again. Hey, Miranda! You weren't gonna leave without me, were you? Miranda, you're here? We thought you were staying on the Adirondack. Transfer came in at the last minute, so I figured I'd slum it on this bucket of bolts. Looks like you got her back together pretty nicely. I wasn't sure what to expect. Don't talk badly about one of the best ships in all of Starfleet. We've rebuilt enough of her by now. She better be one of the best. We'll see about that. But I am glad to be here. He still owes me a bottle of Saurian brandy. Don't think I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Maybe Carter can rustle up that bottle and we can give you a proper welcome. As soon as we wrap up this quick little spacewalk. Here, let me help you. Thanks. So what's the word? Are you back in the security rotation? Yep. Still running with the usual suspects. Whoa. Good to go. See you on the other side.
Activating magnetic souls. Captain Solano should be here momentarily. You'll have to forgive me, I don't know much about Kobliads. But my understanding is you need a steady supply of Deridium to keep your cell structure stabilized, or bad things start to happen. And we have plenty of Deridium in sickbay, so there's no risk of running out. Thank you. Feel free to make yourself at home. And help yourself to whatever you like from the replicator. I can't believe he keeps this around. Don't even know where mine is. He's still got a thing for trains. The warp engines of their day, apparently. The first mineral Captain Solano ever discovered. Always was the nostalgic type. Just a sip of something. Rack the Gino. That sure has a kick. Jara Rydeck. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrot Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. Regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. That would be totally unnecessary. I don't need any pomp and circumstance. You've been here all of five minutes, and already you're trying to make us more efficient. I like it. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. You'll have to forgive me. I don't really know the details. Starfleet has been kind enough to keep the story contained. 
probably because they want to protect me. But I don't mind telling you. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there, within our grasp. <sighs> Until it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard, and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system, creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. <sighs> it was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make, and I have to live with the consequences. We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees, as much as we tell ourselves otherwise. True, but as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I failed. In my defense, I will say, I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO. And I, I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pull any punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on a course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. And what happens if they don't? There's a chain of command for a reason. We all have our orders. That's true. Everyone on this ship should know that. Sometimes the occasional reminder doesn't hurt. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission? I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggest it's several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record. A total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Hatari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagine the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details of the rendezvous. Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? That I don't know. Starfleet hasn't said. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you, but it goes without saying. You have my full support. Hopefully, that day comes sooner rather than later. Pace yourself. Like I said, when it happens is entirely up to you. But first, you have to be willing to put in the work. Of course. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew.
Everyone, if I could have your attention for a moment, I'd like to introduce Commander Jara Rydek, our new first officer. Some quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of? Well, what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. Next, we have Commander Westbrook, our Chief Science Officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydek, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian. We've been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. I've been following your career for quite some time. And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. You've heard of me? Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you were one of those people once. But since then, you've done so much to protect others who need it. I really admire that. So, you've been something of an inspiration to me. Not that I've done anything close to what you've done, but you definitely set a standard to strive for. You really do know a thing or two about me. I'm glad I could inspire you, but it's important to chart your own path. Thanks. You can count on it. And then, of course, you've already met Commander Ermod. Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase, have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag their feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Operations. Staffing, supplies. There's a lot to keep track of on a starship. Good thing we have Commander Ermon. Tactical station. Hopefully a diplomatic mission won't require we use our weapons much. But if it comes to that, we'll be ready. Science station. The Resolute is a science vessel, primarily. Might explain Commander Westbrook's attitude. I'll have to speak with him later. The Helm. The Resolute is a refitted Centaur class meaning it's capable of quick maneuvers. Can't wait to see what she can do. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He's sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field, now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great, let's get to that emitter. we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you 
you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. I am one of that. And so are you. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Calibration. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. Well, I'm so glad you said that. Now I know exactly who to turn to when I have questions. Questions are more Commander Ermont's territory. Captain Solano primarily relies on my knowledge and expertise when he needs answers. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for First Officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being. But you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned. Just curious, that's all. Listen. Can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland. And it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. On screen. Tracing its trajectory. The Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Estimated time to imp. Red alert. Aye.
Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Commander Westbrook, use the deflector dish. Already working on it. Optimal timing displayed. It's going to be tight. Good. Send the pulse on my command. Now! We got it! This is it! All hands, brace for impact! supercharge the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. And you blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one fail-safe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Failsafe override engaged. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Resolute. The failsafes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. Yeah. 
Suit took most of it. Just snuck up on it. That damaged your suit. Energy damage is down to 60%. at the regulator point. Opening the access panel. And now halting the EPS flow to the port nacelle, we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. You must work efficiently. Adjusters reset to neutral. The EPS lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, choke up. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. The docking clamp isn't functioning. We're exploring our options. The option is to detonate the emergency release. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Chara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, mark! We are moments from primary system failure. I got it.
Officer Edselar's hurt and unconscious. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edselar there to access the interior. Roger that. Go in there now. Auxiliary hatch. You go first. What? Let me save your neck this time. No time to fight me on this. Here, let me help you. Medical. We've got one wounded at my location. Millie. Oh, man. We'll see you at sick bay. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. You disobeyed my orders. Well? I shouldn't have gone against your orders, sir. You can't unring that bell. Especially when you do it, not just in front of the bridge crew, but while I was in front of the Starbase staff. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order. 
But you were wrong. You weren't on board, and you didn't have all the information. So I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And... If I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to... You did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. You placed a lot of trust in me, bringing me here. I feel like I've let you down. I brought you here for a reason. I'm still sure it was the right one. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Handar. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I... Uh... You don't look fine. I have to get to sickbay. Go.
Well, that was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenues on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on her, but she'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Your deridium levels got dangerously low and destabilized your cell structure. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're... Rare. I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet, and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. It does make me unique, but it's not a burden at all. I'm honored to be Kobliad, to represent my people. As you should be. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. Something he can put his name on. The more the time passes and the further out of reach it gets, the more risk he'll be willing to take. We all have to chase our dreams, don't we? We need to take some risks. Isn't that why we joined Starfleet? But not at the expense of other people's lives. It's too high a price to pay. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship. And everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Sorry, I didn't mean to be lurking outside of sickbay. I didn't want to intrude, so it felt more appropriate to wait out here. We were all worried about you. Or I should say I was. I wasn't sure what was happening at first. But then I realized it was your condition. I don't want anyone to worry about me. I'm gonna be just fine. This is part of who I am, but I've never let it define me. I get that now. And I promise I'll try not to let being such a jerk define me, either. You trusted my intuition earlier, with the deflector pulse. I felt I should thank you for that. Well, thank you for coming. Even though you didn't have to. I wanted to. Complete the diagnostic sequence, and this shuttle will be cleared for service. Yes, sir. Storm in the Hotari region will interfere with our transporters. So we need all available shuttlecraft in working order. Excuse me, Commander Chobok. Petty Officer Maris. I will leave you to your work. I stopped by sickbay and saw Nilly. I figured you'd want to know. Did the doc get her fixed up? She's stable. But there's something about the storm's radiation that's making it hard to heal the energy burns. That doesn't sound good. She's toughing it out. Dr. Duval said she'll be back on duty soon, though. Come on. 
I have to run the final diagnostic. I can't stay long. I've got a long to-do list before we get to Hotari, and things are piling on faster than I can check them off. We're making all our last-minute checks in security, too. Tactical and security are short-staffed. Uh, we'll just have to take things as they come. Control what we can, and roll with the punches. Next thing you're gonna tell me you're listening to Andorian jazz. No. The point is, the right time might never come. So, I'm just gonna roll with it. I had a chance to think about this while I was away. Then, you and Nilly almost got killed out on the hall. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around it. Or worse. This is just a guess, but... You like me. Is that what this is? How'd you know? It must have been pretty obvious. Which is funny, because... You kinda came out of nowhere for me, at first. Well, you didn't exactly hide it. I wasn't exactly trying to hide it. But since it's that obvious, we've been really good friends for a long time. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. Are you sure about this? They're my feelings. Of course I'm sure. I know what I'm asking. Which is why I'm being direct. I like you, Carter. And I think there could be something more for us. I like you too, Miranda. And I'd like to see where this goes. Good. These are uncharted territories. I'd call it a chemistry experiment. You know, with us. Inquiring minds are gonna want to know about this, so... Do you tell Nilly, or do I? I wouldn't worry about that. Level 1 diagnostic complete. I have to get back to that to-do list. They're probably looking for me. Can't blame them. I'll be seeing you. Approaching the rendezvous point outside Atari Space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. We can take it. We are at the correct coordinates to meet the shuttle. Commander Rydeck, find us our diplomat, if you will. Aye, Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Losing. I can't get it any clearer. We won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Come on, Diaz. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. Pulling in 
debris. I'm on it. There's a large piece of debris headed for the shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Rydek, plot an intercept course. On it. Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17. 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Got it. Whoa! Someone's working hard on the bridge. Shuttlecraft on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Terra firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock? Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Apologies for the landing, Ambassador. I was operating the tractor beam, sir. I take responsibility. Our arrival is the smoothest part of our journey. Your artistry with a tractor beam is commendable. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all, even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. Well, this storm is one of the strangest phenomena we've ever encountered. It's disrupted other systems. Who knows what it might do to a warp drive? Yes. It would seem further investigation is called for. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer... Carter Diaz, sir. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind.
Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. You are a legend, Ambassador. There's not an officer in Starfleet that doesn't know of your career. I would never assume that to be the case. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Olivia and Hotari. The Lydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Olydians have shared a mining operation there. The Olydians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the Ionic interference. Hmm. Have the Olydians retaliated against the Hotari? or taken any action against them. Surprisingly, they have not yet responded in kind. They were open to a Federation presence, but it is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would stand a chance against the Lydian fleet in open war. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly, the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hotari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. We can call it profitable or mutually beneficial, but at the end of the day, the Hotari are still being exploited for their own resources. True peace is not merely the absence of war. And as such, this conflict will surely come again. Neither the Elidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Elidians as a source of dilithium. That certainly changes things. The Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. That means the Hotari have no reason to trust us. I wouldn't go that far, Commander. We are completely neutral in this matter, on neither one side nor the other. Any suggestion otherwise would compromise our position. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium Dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Elidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. But... They have never been observed on the orders of magnitude we have seen in recent weeks. That may answer why the Hotari were able to strike back after so long. They finally had an opportunity, and they took it. That would also explain the Elidian's restraint. And reason to learn as much about the energy anomaly as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught at a disadvantage of our own. 
So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Aye, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Maybe that helps in this case. I'm perfectly happy to work outside the lines. And by extension, you will be doing your duty, Commander. Just not too far outside the lines. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. I am not the chief engineer of this shuttlecraft. When you look at it logically, yes, it is just a shuttle. No different than any of the others. There is plenty that is different about it, and that is what you are to investigate. But please limit your findings to observable scientific phenomena. We'll try to restrain ourselves. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. One nice thing about Vulcans... Chovak is the only person who didn't look at this... ...and treat me like I was something to pity. Doc says I should get used to it. Doesn't mean I want to be reminded of it every minute of the day. Hey, you won't get pity from me. I think it makes you look tough. As tough as you really are, that is. And that... ...makes you sound pretty smart. I might need you to save me for myself next time, though. <laughs> Come on. Let's get to the bottom of this. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. So... I know about your talk with Miranda. You... you do? She sent me a Priority One dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But, I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then... ...I don't know, six weeks or six days later I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you? All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. That just isn't gonna work for me. Are you... ...upset? <laughs> not on your life, Diaz. But... You need to be careful. I like my friends, and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. 
Is that thing done yet? Yeah, yeah it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Subspace variants out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the nacelles for a cracked coil. checked every coil on the port nacelle for imbalances. If any coil in either engine were cracked, I would have detected it. So, it must be the navigation array. Except it's not. Checked and double-checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Come on, I'm never too busy to make time for you. That's not true. <laughs> no, but I am glad you came by. Now that's more accurate. <laughs> I gotta be precise with you, huh? Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari! That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole, uh, steam engines where the warp drives of their day part. Get y'all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. 
Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. That was nice. Yeah, it was. Save some of that for when I get back. We got a deal. Be seeing you. Edsalarda Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. All right, where were we? So, the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You wanna take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands-on maintenance. I like it. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double-check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Same. Warp field inversion and a cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure returned non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. That doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Static field intensity, warp 1.1. 1.2. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. What-o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Ambassador Spock, Captain Solana, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you have come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Lydians. We are honored to be here, as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad... These must be the representatives of the mighty Federation. 
the reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But, either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. That may be true. But let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully he's just one voice amongst many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. The Hotari have invited us as their guests, so we must show them the proper respect. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Hotari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Kobliad? She's not part She can of... speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Now then, what is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kobiard, you would know better than anyone. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Their injustice towards the Kobiard is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliards suffered, 
You finally had the chance to right that wrong. To get out from under their control. Would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case, was it? No. It was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth. Not your Federation rhetoric. As Ambassador Spock has said, we've come seeking a peaceful resolution to this conflict, and have no interest in your dilithium. I'm not nearly as naive as you must think. The Federation has done business with the Illidians for decades, which makes me question your motives. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidian? Only be one or the other, not both. If there can only be one, then it would be in the best interest of all involved if the Illidians resumed operation of the mines. And that is why we should not trust our fate to the Federation. She speaks sense. You do well to listen to her. And you do well to hold your tongue. We'll take back our minds by any means necessary! Then you will see more blood spilled! I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I would agree, Ambassador Spock. I think this is best left to those of us with more experience in diplomatic matters. Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? Hmm. 
Hmm. Soothing. Commander, after hearing so much about the Federation's sense of fairness and justice, I was surprised that you sided with the Elidians. In all honesty, I expected more, especially from someone like you. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. On the Elidians' terms, apparently. I assume you were there, the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. I'm curious why the Elidians haven't fought back. They have the ability to retake the mines anytime they want. Ability is one thing, courage is another. The Elidians know any hostile action on their part will not end well. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. I wouldn't say state of the art. But the Resolute is plenty capable and can hold its own against just about anything. Let's hope so. Because at the moment, it's the only thing preventing them from wiping us off the map. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. I have to say... I fully expected you to side with the Hotari, but obviously the Federation wants a steady supply of dilithium. Something only we can offer. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. Left to the Hotari, it would be nothing short of a disaster. We're not on either side. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major Sarlet Arminta, Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? Something tells me there's more to the story. So what really happened? Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But, that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder.
Commander, if I could have a quick word with you. Of course. Commander Rydek, I have to admit, I was surprised when you said the Illidium should control the dilithium trade. I was under the assumption the Federation was neutral. But maybe I was wrong. We came to help negotiate a peace, not for business. And I can assure you, we have no interest in dilithium. Everyone has an interest in dilithium. But I trust a peaceful resolution serves all our interests. I saw you speaking with the Illidian. I'm sure they're painting themselves as the victims. The Illidians are under the impression the Hotari are somehow the cause of the Ion Storm. <laughs> Which I'm sure they attribute to our lack of experience or sheer inferiority. But we are as much the victims of this horrific storm as they are. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. For better or worse, depending on your perspective. I take it they're against a negotiated peace with the Illidians. Heroes tend to want more of what made them heroic. If it were up to them, they'd wage all-out war and bring ruin upon us all. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. What do you think it is? I've heard rumors it's some sort of ancient artifact, but I haven't seen it myself. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Such rough terrain. No wonder the Hotari are so tough. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Illidians stormed out. 
The Hotare did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chovak. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? We seem to find a way to push his buttons. Yeah, I think he'd blast me out of the airlock if he thought it would help increase engine efficiency by 0.1%. Well, don't worry about it. Chovak's opinion isn't the only one that matters. Last time I checked, I was still chief science officer. And you made a hell of an impression on Ambassador Spock. I'm the one who should be worried with this new first officer on board. Position. Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. <sighs> Problem? Don't get me wrong. Things are definitely trending up with Commander Rydak. She's put my ideas into action. And she listened to me when your life was on the line out on the hull. That sounds like a good thing. It is. But I'm still trying to figure out if she's right for the job. She didn't go through what the rest of us did. Still got chosen to be number one. Can't tell if she was actually siding with me. Or if we just fell on the same side. Well, from what I know, Rydek's a real leader. Yeah, that is what we need, isn't it? From a first officer? Sure. 
Fair enough. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Whoa. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. With two points of data, the Resolute and the probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Cholok, sure. Is that why you're being so friendly to me? Politics? That would be clever, but I think you give me more credit than the captain does. You're all right, Diaz. And you've got potential. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack of all departments like you could be commander in chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. You know, I'd be the best leader Starfleet ever had. Lower decks always have to fix all the problems command causes. Maybe I'd just save everybody some steps. Well, don't forget about us little people when you're running things. Of course not. You gotta remember where you came from. Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. On. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. We got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. We're under attack and we didn't even know it. We need to stop them. Unplug whatever it is they're hitting us with. Now, look here. It's our current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations... They line up with the interference pattern. The storm and this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here, it's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear this is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. Coming to peace talks in a warship. 
This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. We're right to be worried. If they're targeting the Resolute and we can't go to warp, that effectively leaves us at their mercy. Which puts us in a rather difficult position. Especially if they have more tricks up their sleeve. Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they change their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Given their indifference to the negotiations, and what we now know about this warp-disrupting weapon, it's almost as if they want to start a war. And Sidron was convinced the only thing the Illidians respect is force. I would say he's right about that. But at least they know when to hold back. But that does not explain why they would turn their aggressions against us. I don't think the Illidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Armentis said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hotari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harness the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present, far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Illidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. We've received an urgent call from Hotari. The Queen's advisor, Tylus, has asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Sidron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. I found something. I'm sending you a scan. Got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but... I have to go. Tylus. Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. We have to help her. Send another shuttle. We're not maybe... doing anything yet. Not until we know more. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tylus suspects this came from the mines on Tau. It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the Resolute. But if this came from the mines, then it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Lydians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Otherwise, it could put us in a difficult position. 
Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough. At least to satisfy the Federation. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption. And targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this warp problem. And the negotiating team's shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. we Will do. I'll join you and Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly. And I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? It took some damage on the way. That ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Three, two, one. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to. Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ7 interlock? From the toolbox. I don't know what that is. Not much use for one on a security detail, huh? Carter? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll apply pressure while you decouple the panel. Here, I'll help. We've got this. Up and say ah. Uh... Thanks for the hand. We have to get these isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Well, I wouldn't say ever. But I know my stuff. I can see that. Come on, start pulling chips. this some kind of crystal formation whoa this substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen carbon and lithium it's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds. Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there?
Wait. Regulation 364, subsection 9. What? Regulation 364, subsection 9, orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Retrieve a containment module. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? No. Before anything else, this is a security issue. You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. This is another piece of the puzzle we're trying to put together. We should be investigating it. And you can. In the containment lab. But protocol is protocol. I can't make an exception just for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will inform my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. But I overheard talk about the warp disruption on the shuttle. Now these crystals? Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. We could trigger a distress call, get Starfleet to send more ships, or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat-tested vessels. We shouldn't do this alone. That wouldn't be a bad idea. If you think you could do it without getting in trouble. I'll find a way. Be very careful. Okay, stand back. Get this to the containment lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. Last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. Mm. Almost forgot. Can't have that. For a second, I thought she'd gone cold on you. Like she might have changed her mind. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us. Or it's because this is all happening so fast. But she usually doesn't scare easy. Now, you can't tell me you're not a little spooked, too. We all should be. Believe me, I'm taking it seriously. But Miranda talking about sending a distress call on her own? That's going too far. Although, you didn't seem to think so. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now, we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda, too. Commander Rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations and made contact with a representative from the Hotari delegation named Tylus. She mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari Palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Rydeck? If you want to take it from here? Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel, possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze.
99.2% match. Got it. So, what are we looking at? The design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Khan Empire. Their civilization collapsed over 600,000 years ago, but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Takan were once the most advanced, most powerful civilization in the galaxy. Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. I have only encountered passing references to them. Actually, I've heard of the Takan. You have? Quite impressive, Commander. Computer, summarize the Enterprise D's discovery of a Takan outpost. On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D, under the command of Captain Jean Luc Picard, discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardu system. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was only able to escape after negotiating the release with an entity known as Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field. It starts to make sense. What else is there? There's a lot here. Let's take it piece by piece. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was, 16 years ago. Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 63 is of an unknown nature. A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. He was able to control the crystal-based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field, after Commander William T. Riker of the Away Team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. As I have said, they were the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M class planet, a barren rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms. That can't just be a coincidence. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise-D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then-current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. There appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Portal 63. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. I suppose it makes sense considering what happened to the Enterprise D. The Elidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, I see why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. There's only one way to find out. We need to see what's down there for ourselves. I might be able to help with that. We've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on Tau. Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. So we know where to look. <sighs> Commander Rydex right. 
We need to know what's down there, what the Hotari are hiding, to better understand what we're up against, and to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon would not be viewed favorably by either side. However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces. Which is why I'm thinking of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Assuming you're up to the task. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'm ready for action, Captain. Just say the word and I'll be there. I'll admit, I wish I could go myself. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality and aggravating an already tense situation. We can't afford any mistakes, which is why I've chosen you. It's a risk we have to take. We need to know what we're up against. Agreed. And of course you'll have the full support of the Resolute throughout. We must take every precaution. Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. The Olydians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so will provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Petty Officers Diaz and Ed Salar. Where is the crystal formation that you found in the shuttle? I have tasked Ensign Calloway with performing a full analysis of the tetrametric pulses. Security brought it to the containment lab. I was just there. They don't know anything about it. Security never checked it in. Miranda never got there? She's the one that had the crystal formation? Yeah. Her and the rest of the security detail from the negotiations. Diaz Tamaris. Try her again. Carter Diaz to Miranda Maris. Commander Westbrook to Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Respond. Something's not right. She's still on the ship. She has to be. Computer, locate Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Petty Officer Miranda Maris is in the isolinear storage array on Deck 5. I'll go find her. Good. I am sure Mr. Diaz can attend to this on his own. Isolinear chips?
hâte. Oh, it's just you. I'm busy right now. Why don't you come back later? I called you on the comm badge. Twice. Amanda Westbrook, too. Why didn't you answer? Oh, I guess I was just caught up in my work. But I'm through here, so I can't stay in chat. I have other things to do. Sorry you came all this way for nothing. What exactly were you doing in here? I saw you accessing files. Copying them onto that. This is... secure data. It's really not my place to talk about it. Look, I appreciate that you came to check on me, but I'm fine. You worry too much. We're on a starship. Nothing's gonna happen to me here. I'm worried because you're acting strange. I don't know what it is you're really doing in here, but Commander Westbrook said the crystals you took never made it to the containment lab. Will you drop it? I don't like being interrogated, Carter. Hey! Wait up! <clears throat> I'm getting some very mixed signals from you right now. Sorry, I'm under a lot of stress right now. Just tell Chovak or whoever I don't know where the crystals are and let me go about my business. I know we have some things to figure out. I don't have time to stand around and debate with you. Not right now. I don't know what it is, but you're hiding something. What's in that storage drive? I told you, it's secure data. So drop it. Miranda, hold on! No. Get out of my way. So I see you found each other. You were taking so long, the commander sent us to see what the problem was. Diaz, you were sent here with specific orders, and fighting your crewmate wasn't one of them. What the hell is going on here? Let's just let them explain. I'd like to hear that, because I know what it looks like. Ask her! She was doing something with this. Copying all kinds of data. This drive is unauthorized. There are ISOs all over the floor. And that's why I was in here, investigating this situation. And when Carter came looking for me, we got our wires crossed. It wasn't anything more than that. Even if that was true, it still doesn't answer what happened to the crystal formation that she took. And she isn't helping. I can't tell you what I don't know. I brought them where they belonged, and that's where I left them. I don't know what's going on here, but I think we need to call it into security. She can explain herself in the brig. Hold on a minute. We don't need to put this on anyone's permanent record. Miranda, maybe you're feeling out of sorts and we should head to sickbay so the doc can check you out? Yeah, I... I haven't felt right since I came back from Hotari. I think I should see the doctor. You two know her? If you really think she's not well? We can take it to sickbay first. But what I know is this is a security breach, and we should treat it as such. Please, just let me go see the doctor. She did have a bumpy ride back on the shuttle. Let's take her to sickbay. It's better than the brig, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Fine. Get checked out by medical. You two go with her. I'll put this back together.
foliage on Tau resembles underwater plant life on Earth. The universe is full of mysteries. Rydek here. This is Zermont. Any trouble getting to the surface? I'm really starting to miss transporters. As long as this storm is around, you'd better learn to light shuttles. But if you can find the cause of the interference, we might be able to get back to transporting. As if I needed another incentive. We both know there's a lot more than that riding on this. Fair enough. You'll need to get in and out of the mine undetected, so I hope Minister Tylus can help in that regard. So do I. And to keep this covert, we'll refrain from contact unless absolutely necessary. Understood. Rydek out. Ionic interferences coming from underground. I should find a safer way down there. shuttle take off. Hopefully no one else did. It's good to see you. Even under these unfortunate circumstances. When you called to give us a scan, it sounded like they caught you. I was worried you'd been hurt. It was nothing I couldn't handle. Lead the way. I'll fill you in on what we've learned about the situation. Follow me. The device Galvin and Sidron brought back from the mines is being used to control some sort of warp disruption weapon that has the Resolute trapped in Hotari space. According to our readings, the power source for that device is on this moon, at the specific coordinates I sent you. That sounds impossible. That explains the rumors of the Hotari controlling the Ionic Storm. We strongly suspect the device was created by an ancient empire known as the Takan. Takan? Once the most powerful civilization in the galaxy. But they've been gone for over 600,000 years. It's hard to believe there's something like that on Tau. Which is why I need proof. If we find hard evidence that Galvin and his allies are hiding dangerous Takan technology, I can convince the Federation to let us intervene. Understood. We're almost there. That's the mine. Prospect 614 North, Subdivision 20. It's enormous. Just one of the thousands across town. The pride of Hotari. How do we get inside? The structure that circles the mine has entry points for transporting equipment into the lower levels. They're guarded, but nothing I can't get past using my authority. Well, that's good to hear. 
As long as you can avoid being seen, I should be able to talk my way past any minor. And provide a little distraction for you in the process. How do I avoid being seen? You don't use the door. How dare you! Don't you know who I am? I... I am Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. That's not... The Queen would be furious to hear you try to deny me entry. The Queen? But I just... You just... Just what? Just now realize the trouble you've made for yourself? And who exactly do you think you're going to report this to? Because I'll be reporting you as well, to someone much further in the ladder. You have no authority here. Do you understand who pays your wage? I can inform the Queen directly of this instance. There's no You will regret everything you said here today. You should have opened the doors the second I am here before you. That's not the protocol. I didn't Each know... Each second you, were... you delay my entry, you will be recorded, processed, and permanently marked on the list. I can't believe this. Does your brain function? Do you speak our tongue? Minister, I have orders. How could a fellow Hotari not understand this? You're digging your own grave. I've reached the end of Someone my takes their breaks up here. The Maybe the same guard who left that window unlocked. I, just... I suppose the view is nice. A wise choice. Lead the way. Be quick. Force field. Looks like it was installed recently. No safe way around it. <sighs> Not going that way. Okay. Let's get a look inside you. System access. Let's see if I can just bingo. Better hurry. Not sure how long she can keep him busy. be rigged to only open for registered users. No control panel here. I should take a look with my tricorder. Something in here is keeping that door closed. Got it. Should remove the security check on the door.
I didn't come here to educate an imbecile on royal protocol. Of course not, Minister. So I will be about my business here, and you will take yourself out of my sight. There you are. You really let that guy have it. It worked, didn't it? I'm used to having to throw my weight around. Hard to get anyone to listen to you otherwise. I'm impressed. I didn't know you had it in you. There's a lot you don't know about me. Underestimate me at your peril. The catwalks were booby-trapped. Galvin and Sidron have gone to great lengths to keep out the uninvited. Well, we're inside. Where do you want to start? The ionic interference is coming from below us. We need to go deeper. That lift goes down, at least to the changeover station. But we can't use it without DNA authorization from one of the guards. I have an idea, but we need a few samples of DNA from the miners who work here. Samples? Fingerprints, sweat, blood. Which will trick the machine and get us control of the lift. That's the theory. Let's test it. There's DNA on this console, but it's only partial. I can't use this. Maybe because we're outside. The weather out here could dilute any DNA samples. What about inside that structure? That's where the workers spend most of their time. Good idea. An Elydian console. All the managerial technology in the mines is Elydian. So they can keep an eye on their investment. That's how it is. Wow, that is a lot of DNA. I should look for the most concentrated spots. a stable DNA sample. It's only partial, but a few more should do it. Not concentrated enough. I should try somewhere else. If they eat in here, it's likely there's some DNA in the room. Hotari must be tough on the inside, too. Leftovers. I should give this a scan. There's gotta be stable DNA here. Good. That's another I could use. Just need one more sample. Some kind of glowing mineral being used as a light source. Might want one of these for my cabin, actually. Not enough. Gotta keep looking. 
this will work. Perfect. That's enough to make the DNA profile. Time to go back to the lift. You're not coming inside? There are some things I'd rather not smell. Ah. This facility doesn't seem well maintained. Do you think we could just find a way to climb over this? Possibly. But the console on the lift itself is locked by the same system that locks this ramp. No shortcuts, then. I'm sure you can figure something out. That's an enormous tractor beam. One of our strongest. The miners dump everything they find into the center, and the tractor beam moves it all up into the collector ship. You sound a little proud of it. The Illidians may have given us new tools, but the methods of excavation are all Hotari designed. It worked. Theory proven. I'll get it started. Ready? Be okay. I've survived worse than this. Well, I haven't. But I'll put my faith in you. For now. Jara. No, stay back. There's a guard at the station. You'll have to hide. Who are you? What are you doing here? You watch your tone with me. I'm Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. I speak for the Queen herself. This is a restricted area. No one gains access without the approval of Galvin or Sidron. Wait. Jewess Gawad Abowincha. <laughs> Let me go! Are you injured? No, I, I just... I thought if I could talk my way through like always, I'd be fine, but... I, I, I'm a diplomat. This isn't what I do. I've never even fired a weapon. This is just... It's real now. I wasn't ready for this. Tylus, you can do this. I don't see what you're basing that on. All you've shown me so far is an iron-willed determination to save your people. I don't expect that's changed. No. No, it hasn't. My authority has never been challenged like that. It meant nothing to him. So we should assume any Hatari we encounter from here on can't be reasoned with. Agreed. The only loyalty they have down here is to Galvin and Sidron. Can you switch over the lift? The guard should have a scan card that will allow us to operate the switch. Got it. He's not dead, is he? He's still one of my people, and I didn't come here to take Otari lies. My phaser's set to stun. He'll be perfectly fine, just unconscious for a while. I see. We don't have that sort of technology on our weapons. Good to know. 
Energy readings are emanating from this tunnel. It's sure to be guarded in there. Stay low and follow my lead. Is that all dilithium? Not all of it. We excavate large chunks of rock that contain varying amounts of dilithium ore. It's sorted and processed at the collector ship above. Guards. I take that as a sign we're getting close. I'll get a closer look. Looks like they've improvised a barrier. Yes, we must be getting closer. particular card, don't we? I'm afraid so. We don't have time to wait for them to finish whatever they're doing. We'll have to try to keep low and sneak past them. I'm starting to see the utility of a phaser. I wouldn't stand a chance against all three of them. Can you open that door? Not without that scan card. I don't like our options here. I have to get us that card so we can open the door. How? If they detect you, Galvin and Sidron's followers are clearly willing to kill to protect whatever is in this mine. Hey, I'm trained for this. I'll be fine. What should I do? Avoid being seen. Stick to the edge of the room and meet me at the door. Let's go. 
Elven going to make us wait? I'm not worried. He's let us well. I'd so melt far. if I went through there. It's a miracle. Keep we've moving. Been here. We've been waiting for so long. Patience, brother. We'll get our chance. It's inevitable after all. That it is. Stay close. Stop! What? Motion sensors. They'll trigger an alarm. We'll be found. Invisible to the naked eye. They could be anywhere. How will we get through? It's where the uprising started. Otari, don't do this. We defend ourselves, but we don't kill on this scale, this level of savagery. There's no such thing as a bloodless rebellion. I don't know if we should keep going. So much death. I don't want to end up like them. We'll make sure they didn't die for nothing. What we learned here could save the rest of your people. Okay. Okay. Whatever happened here, it made the Illidians abandon the mines. Let's find out what they're so scared of. Otari and Elidian, both sides, took a beating. The Hotari fortified the side of the room opposite the door. It's a good tactic, but a few crates aren't going to stop fully armed Elidian soldiers. How did they win? Is this the effects of an Elidian disruptor? Yes. 
Disruptors are cruel weapons. These crystalline particles, they're not dilithium. Are they common in the mines? Not that I've ever seen. From the blast marks, it looks like the Elidians had far greater firepower. Footprints. Elidian boots. Running back the way we came. Tylus. What kind of weapon did this? This is like nothing I've ever seen or heard of. M my people don't have a weapon that does this. What else can you tell me? What an awful way to die. This must be why the Elidians are so afraid. Technology that surpasses their own, in the hands of the Hotari that they've lorded over for centuries. Where did this weapon come from? Well, the crystals are giving off tetrametric pulses. If I set my tricorder to search for that frequency, it'll lead us right to the source. This makeshift barrier forced the Elidians to enter from the service corridor, creating a choke point. Quite the advanced tactic for a species that's never waged war. This Elidian tried to run. They didn't let him. The Elidians shot to kill. But if they killed him, why was he shot in the back? Huh, you're right. The shot came from the side the Hatari were defending. We don't kill our own. And he wasn't just caught in the middle. Killed by the same crystallization as the Elidian. Whose side was the killer on? Silas, you may not want to look down there. I've come too far to... What is this? They've been dumping bodies down here. Uh... <sighs> Unforgivable. Galvin and Citron will be made to answer for this. More of these crystals. Another of my people dead.
Tylus, what is this machine? It's for tunnel boring. The cone on the front is covered in disruptors that allow it to melt through the solid rock. They don't seem to have finished the tunnel. Why stop here, I wonder? Think they parked this here on purpose? One way to find out. Need any help? I've got it. This concentration of tetrametric radiation has never been recorded. Whatever they're hiding, it's right through here. This feels strange. The crystals are increasing, growing outward, replacing the soil. It's like an infection, a parasite, growing inside Tau. Incredible. This is definitely not Hotari. It's the remnants of the Takan Empire. I don't think we should be here. This is exactly where we should be. Every strange thing we've seen in this system, it might all come from this room. We need to learn everything we can. somewhat resembles a transporter pad. Look familiar? It's almost identical to the console Galvin has hidden in the palace. It looks like a control surface. What are we looking at? It's made of the same crystalline material as the rest of this place. But I can't tell much else. It might be some kind of sleep mode. I can't analyze this further unless it starts working normally. Maybe we can turn it on from somewhere else. Hopefully. Let's keep looking around. How are you holding up? I knew Galvin and Citron were dangerous. Now I know they're more powerful than I could have imagined. But the worst of it is knowing they got there by turning our people against their own. This place feels... 
wrong. I'll get what I need, and we can get out of here. Thank you. Is it too, um, convenient that we found this place unguarded? There's an old Earth saying about never looking a gift horse in the mouth. What's a horse? Never mind. Can your device read this? It can roughly translate the words, but we don't have enough Taconian language on record to understand how it's structured. Oh well. The device's primary function is to transmute lithium into this quantized crystalline compound. Possibly for the creation of weapons. Do you think one of these was used on that Elydian in the tunnels? Such a cruel weapon. Looks like some sort of replicator. Hmm. I can't get it to work. It has power. Must be looking for some other kind of authorization. Crystallized lithium compounds. Its internal structure is extremely ordered. In fact, the states of these crystals on a subatomic level suggests a storage device of some kind. Energy levels are both stable and ordered, like information. Some of them appear to be depleted. What kind of information would you deplete? these all over the floor. These haven't been depleted yet.
This suggests there's some type of complex life form contained within each crystal. Life form? There's something alive in these tiny crystals? That's what it says, but hard to imagine how that's possible. Our science division will have a field day with this. We need to study it on the ship. Chara? I see it. What's happening? Someone turned it on. There's no one here. Maybe the device I saw in the palace can send a signal? If that's the case, we may not be alone for long. Let's hurry. I can feel the power coming off it. I've never seen this kind of energy before. I'll need to record this with my tricorder. This... can't be right. It's putting out almost 50 Zeta Joules of energy. I assume that's a lot? Enough to power this entire quadrant. This amount of power, the, the kind of radiation it's putting out, it's... It's the cause of the storm. The warp disrupting beam, all of it. What do we do now? We get back to the Resolute. They have to know about this. Come on, let's... Quickly. We have to hide. Outrageous! I demand you let me go! No need to complain. You're about to receive a gift beyond your wildest imagination. If anything, I consider it an honor. What is that? What are you doing? You'll see. Soon enough. I, I, I can influence the course of the negotiations. I can make sure the Hotari get the, the end of the bargain. So can I.
The doc's on her way here to check Miranda out. We did the right thing, bringing her here. She was off, from as soon as she came off the shuttle. Talking about a distress call? Everything. I just want to make sure she's okay. This isn't like her. We'll get her fixed up. You should talk to her. Keep her spirits up. And to think... Yesterday I couldn't wait to get back on the Resolute. To get back to see you. You can't imagine how stupid I feel right now. I can't even believe it myself. You're not stupid. Not by a long shot. We'll figure out what's happening. And we'll get you fixed up. I'd like to believe that. I'm scared, Carter. I don't want to find out that there's something really wrong with me. Something they can't fix. Or even explain. Are you sure it's that? And not that you don't want the rest of us to find out what's going on with you? Sounds like you've already made up your mind about me. There she is. It's good that you brought her here. Petty Officer Maris and the rest of the security away team skipped the bioscan when they came back from Otari. And they've been impossible to track down since. They don't know what kind of pathogens they might have picked up. Is that going to... Sit still. This will just take a moment. You're looking at me like I'm some kind of science experiment. Or a monster. It's kind of freaking me out. Did you realize you skipped the bioscan? I mean, if you weren't Don't feeling right... Don't try to right... blame me for this, Diaz. No. That's not Petty Officer Miranda Maris. I don't know who that is, but it's not Miranda. I know that sounds hyperbolic, but that's the simplest way to put it. What? And who is it? I couldn't begin to say right now, but comparing the baseline readings I'm getting here with the DNA and brainwave records in Miranda's 15501, well, I'm seeing impossible variations. I guess you could call the process bioforming. This body is Miranda's, but her DNA is changing into something else. But what's more troubling is, there appears to be another mind layered on top of her baseline brain scans. Miranda isn't in control. Someone else is. That explains a lot, but it's not the explanation I wanted to hear. There's no sugarcoating in my sick bay. How does something like that even happen? Starfleet has encountered similar phenomenon in the past, and there are a number of mechanisms through which these kinds of changes can take place. But we've only scratched the surface on this, and we need to do more research. I want to take some functional readings. Take this, and get her talking while it scans her. I'm sure you don't want to speculate, Doc, but is there any... I don't want to be incinerated as biohazard. Why I did it? Any of it? But it's like 
there's a voice in my head. It was telling me to go download the data. It told me not to let you stop me. And there was nothing I could do to say no. But I didn't want to. I swear. So this voice in your head, what else does it tell you? It's not like a conversation. It's hard to explain. Well, I still can. I just want to say... Carter, I'm sorry. I really am. I hope you know that. Don't give up on yourself just yet. We can beat this thing. Oh, I'm not giving up. What the... A transporter pad? The drive! of the flame. They can't get away with that. You have to shoot Miranda. Scions of the flame? I don't like the sound of that. never gonna believe this. The reason the Universal Translator didn't recognize that language is because it's only ever been read. It's the Takan language. Get your filthy Hotari hands off me! We'll burn your planet to the ground, animals! Wait, no! <laughs> This can only mean our time has come. I'm only sorry I couldn't find a more suitable host for you. All in good time. This is only the beginning. They're working together? An Olydian and a Hotari? They did something to him. Secure the Cartabula! Cartabula? It's the energy source.
Spread out. Search the vault. Go back through the mine. Cut off their escape. Find them! Time to go. Trapped. They're blocking the only exit. Maybe not. Can you buy me some time? For what? This vehicle looks a lot tougher than that barrier. Hotari woman! Machine. Surrounded. No, I'll get it working. I just need some time. Lift. 
Resolute, two to beam up immediately. Resolute, come in. Dora! <laughs> Are you all right? I think so. It hurts. Miranda was able to transport through the storm. There has to be some path through that we're not seeing. Tetrametric radiation is saturating our sensors. There is too much interference to pick up the residual transporter signature. Wait, 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 wait. Tetrametric radiation? Of course. I can align the transporter with the tetrametric signature. The crystals emit tetrametric pulses every 3.8422 seconds, roughly 26 centihertz. All of this is connected. The storm, Warp killing field, the crystals, Miranda's alien transporter tech. Okay, I've got the transporter in calibration. There are a lot of biosigns in that mine, all stacked on top of each other. I need something to identify the commander signal. Something loud, energetic. Understood. Commander Rydak. We have penetrated the storm's interference, but we are unable to pinpoint your signature. We need you to generate a high-energy event to help us... High-energy event. Got it. Tylus, are you still with me? I am. Good. I'm going to shoot my phaser some dilithium to cause a piezoelectric rupture. What? Why? Signal flare. These crystals have to be pure enough. Bigger still. Come on. Whoa! Dilithium explosion! Is that energetic enough? More than enough. I can lock onto their biosigns now. I've got their biosigns isolated. Commander, we have your signal. I'm gonna tunnel a path through the ionic interference. Calibrate the signal. I've got a lock. Energize. Degrading. Can you hold the signal? I'm trying. I 
got it. Come on, come on. Yes! Get her to sickbay. Captain Solano and Ambassador Spock have just returned from Hotel. Take a look at that. Radic, I need you on the bridge, now. I'm here. The Illidians are preparing to attack Hotari. Status report. Your systems are now fully powered. All torpedo tubes open. They're preparing to fire. We should hail the Illidian flagship, Captain. Readying phasers if you want them. Stand by. Await my order. Recommendation, Commander. We need to act quickly. Hail the Illidians. Maybe we could talk some sense into them. Hail them. No response. Try it again. Still nothing. The Illidians? They've powered down their weapons. Ah. Uh, you sure about that, Mr. Amon? They're venting some kind of gas from their ship. Hold on. Now all of their systems have shut down. That's unexpected. Maintain our position. No telling what they're up to. Yes, sir. What's happening? There's an energy dampening field coming from Tau. Take us out of range. Aye, Captain. Captain? Flagship is hailing us. On screen. Zeldi to the Starship Resolute. Our main power cores are completely disabled. The more power we give, the more it takes. Running off batteries. Life support systems have failed. Unable <coughs> to ventilate contaminated atmosphere. Admiral, you are about to launch an attack on a defenseless planet. Kobliot, you supported us in the negotiations. We need your help again now. Please, I beg of you. You must render assistance. System failures are compounding around my ship. You're the aggressors. Why should we help you? We were not going to fire. We were posturing. The Hotari aren't posturing. It was just to show a force to move the negotiations forward. You're not going to leave us to die, are you? No, we are not. Admiral, excuse us while we devise a rescue plan. By my estimate, the crew only have 23 minutes before their atmospheric mix becomes lethal. While we may not be able to transport the Illidians directly, if we were to transport them from their ship to a nearby shuttlecraft, it should be possible to amplify the transporter signal there and reroute it to the Resolute. The Ambassador's plan is incomplete. An away team will have to beam aboard the Zeldi and set up pattern enhancers for a stable enough signal out of the dampening field. Thank you for identifying my deficiency, Commander Chovak. Jara, I need a senior officer in command of this. Take Chovak and Bedrosian in the shuttle and get it done. Petty officers Diaz and Edsilar, you will be part of the rescue mission, as will I. We will bring the shuttle within transporter range of the Zeldi, then beam you both aboard. Beam us on board? Why? The pattern enhancers must be placed on the Zeldi to make it possible to beam the Illidians back to the Resolute. Gather the pattern enhancers and get to the docking bay. going on the wrong mission. Oh, what's that? We're going to rescue the Illidians, the people that oppressed the Hotari, when we should be going to rescue Miranda. This thing that's happened to Miranda is like the Trill symbiosis joining, only worse. 
and I've seen too many people I care about wiped away by some greater entity to stand by while the same thing happens to her. I wanted no part of it then, and I won't stand for it now. Her body's stolen and used like puppets. I'm not giving up on her either. We'll get her back. Whatever it takes. Right now, we've got other lives to save. Yeah. The away team is ready. Resolute to Shuttlecraft Melville. You're cleared for takeoff. Acknowledged, Resolute. Melville taking off. within range. Any closer will put the shuttlecraft at risk. Preparing to transport the away team. Energizing. almost completely drained. And the other systems, too. Oh, no. We gotta get to their transporter room. The atmosphere in here is turning to poison. All of these Elidians are going to die if we don't get them out of here. These must close in case of emergency. They don't have enough power left to function. Carter, give them a charge with your phaser. Should make them open.
not working. No power's running through any of this. We gotta get him open Stop. manually. I am the ranking officer here. State your intentions. We are under siege. Explain yourselves. What does it look like? We're here to rescue you. And yet, you cannot even open a door. Whoa there. I am still able to stand. What are you trying to do? We gotta get into your transporter room. Then we can get your people off the ship. Make sure they're evenly spaced. We need to manually adjust beam trajectory so they connect. I got this one. You get the others. Make sure the others are lined up. Pattern enhancers are aligned and ready to go. Let's round them up. These will boost the signal so we can transport through the storm. We have a shuttle outside this ship that will route the signal to the Resolute. All crew to transporter room two. We are evacuating. We're alive. Here they come. <laughs> okay, coordinates. Beam status. Energizing controls. Please step on the platform so we can evacuate you. The crew goes first, Harminta. Sir, I mean this. You! Get on the platform already! Okay. The interface is in Elydian, but the layout is the same as the Starfleet transporter. I just gotta do what I did before. Select the people to transport. Plot a path through the ionic interference. the signal gain to get the highest possible output. Yeah. 
Even at this range, the interference is too much. The system is suggesting better transport coordinates. Diaz, the shuttle. You're sitting right in the thick of it. I'm sending you specific coordinates for a clear signal path. Waypoint's been added to the navigational computer. There, Commander. Give or take 50 meters. Melville to away team. Energize. I have the first group of Elidians in the pattern buffer. Redirecting and transmitting to the Resolute now. This is Resolute. We have the Elidians safely aboard. <laughs> We did it! I was so worried this wouldn't work. We got this. Don't celebrate yet, Lieutenant. We've got a lot of people left to save. Right. Sorry. This is Commander Rydek. We're holding steady. Signal is good. Keep them coming. to those in my charge. Sir, I must insist you go so you can lead our people. I will see to any stragglers. Yes, that may be for the best. But first, let me thank our human saviors. I'll pin medals on your uniforms when this is over. For all your brave work. We're not out of the woods yet, sir. So if you don't mind? Ah, oh, yes. Forgive me. We're ready for transport. Get the Admiral to safety. Energize. Massive power surge! 
charge. Sending available power to the annular confinement beam. I have the Illidians in the pattern buffer, but I cannot resolve their signal to send them through to the Resolute, nor can I materialize them here. We need a better position with the Resolute. Lydians in the last transport. I regret to report that we have lost the last transport. My comrade. The Admiral. Unfortunately, our shuttle systems were damaged by the power surge. We can no longer serve as a transporter node. Carter, these readings are off the charts. Of the storm is on this ship. That must have been the power surge when it came on board. You're right. It's a con energy source. They call it the Cartabula. It's here. Is that? The intruders are preparing to bring the Zeldi to war. And we're about to be stuck on it. There is an old Lydian saying about leaping off the hot skillet and falling to the flame below. Yeah, we got that one too. I hate to say this, but I don't think there's a rescue coming for us. That was our job, so we're gonna have to save ourselves. And with the Cartabula on board, we're gonna have a new job. Stop it. Stop them. I like this job. That's all well and good, but if we're not getting off this ship, we're really backed into a corner here. We can't get off this ship. But maybe I could target somewhere on, on the ship. ship. We are reading the warp engines powering up. Yeah, we picked up on that. We do not have a way to evacuate you from the Zeldi. The shuttlecraft is too heavily damaged. That's all right, Commander. We have a plan of our own. We're gonna stay on this ship. That is very bold of you, Mr. Diaz. Live long and prosper. I hear voices down the corridor. They will be here soon. I'll guard the door. You just get us out of here, Diaz. Hey, Stretch. Help us with this map. Find somewhere as remote as you can. They're almost here. Meso. Too exposed. There. The aft cargo bay. That is acceptable. Sounds good to me. Whatever you're doing, do it now!
Locked in. Four to transport. Come on, Bell. <laughs> Bell. It's too late for him. Carter. Three to transport. saved many lives. And our people on the Zeldi knew the risks their duties entailed. Contact the Resolute, Mr. Chobok. Have them bring us back. Yes, Commander. Saved as many Illidian lives as you could. And more importantly, you looked after your crew. That's what counts. You have to look out for your own, first and foremost. That doesn't change the fact... Fifteen lives were lost out there. True. But five times more than that were saved. It's all a matter of perspective. Unfortunately, the Admiral was among those who didn't make it. I'm sure it's a huge blow to the Illidians. I hope they don't blame us. We suffered our own losses as well. How are we getting our away team back? Ambassador Spock and the rest of the senior staff are waiting for us in the briefing room to discuss just that. I wanted a chance for you and I to speak first, given the circumstances. While protocol might suggest we alert Starfleet about our situation, Missing crew, the data breach, a possible threat from the Hotari or Khan. I think we're better off keeping this to ourselves, under our control. You know what's at stake for me here, and what is at stake for you, too. I can't afford another mission gone wrong, and I'm really counting on your support. I don't want to raise a false alarm just yet. But I have every confidence we can wrap this up before it gets any worse than it already is. I'll follow your lead. We can keep this under wraps for now. Always nice to know you have my back. One of the primary reasons I brought you on board. I made the right decision. You should know you can always count on me, no matter what. I appreciate that. We're ready in the briefing room, Captain. On our way. Is there any update on our efforts to trace the Zeldi's warp signature? Unfortunately, no. Somehow they were able to mask the signature and block our ability to track their trajectory. I'm also concerned about what went with them. A Taconian energy source. Sidron referred to it as the Cartabula. Yes, I've been analyzing your tricorder scans. This Cartabula is more powerful than any energy source on record. 
It disabled our ability to warp and likely created the Ion Storm. Something that powerful in their hands? We have to find that ship. It could be anywhere by now. Literally anywhere. The Hotari must know where the ship is headed. If you can even call them Hotari at this point. Whoever they are, they've cut off all communication. And our only source on the inside is now in sickbay. Tylus. The Takan also compromised our systems when Petty Officer Maris stole data from our computer core. We're assessing what was lost as we speak. It's just too soon to say exactly what they had access to. Starfleet needs to know about this. We're not contacting Starfleet until we fully understand the situation. There are too many unknowns. They stole our data. That's reason enough to warn Starfleet. But the captain does have a point. It might be better to wait until we know more. We shouldn't take any chances. We should at least alert Starfleet that our system was compromised. I agree with Commander Rydak. We should let Starfleet decide how they want to handle it. And essentially tell them this mission was a failure before it's even over? No. I thought we discussed this. I want to speak with the Hotari and get to the bottom of this before we get Starfleet involved. I expect we'll meet resistance. The Hotari think we violated our neutrality by entering their minds. Assuming the negotiations are off, we no longer have an official role here. We still have a responsibility to the Hotari. And the Elidians. The Takan are a threat to both their civilizations. No. They're a threat to us all. The device Commander Rydek found in the Taconian Vault is an advanced delivery mechanism for a complex biogenetic transformation process. Meaning what, exactly? Not only are they bioforming innocent hosts, transforming them into Takan, they're taking the DNA and engrammatic data of a specific Deconian and displacing that of its host. It's a hostile takeover on a cellular level. Bringing individual Takan back to life, one by one. And what happens to the host? It's hard to say exactly. Some of their memories remain intact, but the implanted Taconian identity appears to have full control. In time, all that remains of the host may be lost entirely. Like a parasite. Exactly. Petty Officer Maris called herself a scion of the flame, but the computer had no information about it. She also shot the hell out of my ship as she escaped, nearly killed a few of our crew. So we know this about those scions. They're dangerous. The Takan have crossed a line. That much is certain. However, Meeting with the Hotari could offer insight into their true intentions. Under the pretense of an apology for betraying their trust and trespassing on their territory. Given the options, this might be our best chance to find out more about what they have planned. I couldn't agree more. With the Cartabula gun, I can confirm we have regained warp capability and the use of our transporters. Excellent. Commander Ermot, see if we can arrange a meeting on Hotari as soon as possible. As Ambassador Spock suggested, under the pretense of an apology. Aye, Captain. Nice work, everyone. You're long overdue for a Deridium infusion. Uh, it looks like I am. Aside from almost running out of Deridium, you're in good health. Nice to get some positive news for a change. You I don't worry about. A captain, however... Go on. You see it, don't you? He's desperate. Withholding intel from Starfleet just to save his reputation. That's not normal behavior for a captain. I was relieved you called him out on it. You've spent enough time with him now. Seen enough of how he runs the ship. If there's something wrong, as the ship's doctor, I need to know. Don't sugarcoat it. You know I wouldn't. To be honest, I'm worried about him. It seems like the stress of this mission is getting to him. He has so much riding on its success. And I am concerned he'll do something rash to ensure it. 
to know we see eye to eye on this. And I want to be clear, I care about Solano. I really do. I've been his doctor for years. There are more important things at stake than offending an old friend. If it gets any worse, you know where to find me. Jara. Monitor your Duridium levels. I'll be right back. How's your wound? Like it was never there. I feel lucky you were there with me. Without you, I'd be, well... Thank you for saving my life. Even with the wonders of your technology, it wouldn't have mattered if you'd left me for dead. I should be thanking you. You took that disruptor shot for me. Without you, I might be the one in sickbay, or worse. Well, I couldn't just let you die. Not after all you did to help. I won't forget it. We saw the truth down in those mines. What Citron and Galvin really are. Who they've become. The lengths they're willing to go to. What they did to that Lydian. It's hard to accept. That everything I thought I knew, so much was a lie. It's always better to know. No matter how awful, the truth is better than living with a lie. I am coming around to that thinking as well. Commander Rydek, you're needed on the bridge at once. What is it? The Hotari have agreed to meet. We have no idea when or if the Resolute is going to catch up. But if we can get access to the Zeldi systems, we might be able to figure out what the Takan are up to. You got somewhere we could do that? For how uptight the Elidians are, that cargo bay is kind of a mess. Come on, Carter. We need to stick with the tall guy. Huh. The Lydian consoles still have mechanical keyboards as a backup. Looks airtight and climate controlled. Must be where they put the precious cargo. Based on how this is reinforced, it probably contains dilithium. Stray phaser blast could cause a piezoelectric rupture and blow a hole in the ship. Better be careful. Up there? All right. Etzelar, let's do this. The internal sensors. The what? When they scan the ship for life signs, they'll know right where we are. There must be devices that perform the scan. Right there. And there. There's several of them around the room. Got it. We'll disable them. How? They're too high to reach, even for me. Not too high for our phasers. Low power, Millie. Let's not set off any fire alarms. I got the ones over here. Got one. Another down. Hurry, Carter! I am! Only one left. Here it comes. won't be able to detect us. That buys us some time. Now that the Zeldi has its power again, 
I might be able to access some of the ship's systems from here. I'll take care not to give away our position. The Takan might not even know we're still on board this ship. Miranda only saw us transport away. She probably thinks we're back on the Resolute. Miranda. Don't give up on her yet, Carter. She had you in her sights, and she didn't shoot. That means the real Miranda is still in there. The Takan don't have her. Not completely, at least. She must still feel something. She disintegrated Crewman Bell. If Miranda's personality still exists, she can't help us. We don't know how this works, and I'm not giving up on her. I know she played us, used her sympathies, your relationship to break out of sickbay. But maybe there's a way to turn her back and Miranda could help us stop the Takan. Here, on the ship. Just because the Trill joining is permanent doesn't mean the Takan bioforming has to be. I've heard enough of your prattling on about your friend. You have to think like a soldier. She's our enemy now. She'll be dealt with like the rest of the Takan. My friend Miranda is not responsible for what she's doing. The Takan have taken control of her mind. We certainly can't kill her for it. Speak for yourself. If anyone threatens the Empire, they are the enemy. It's just one life, and it's already been lost. You don't get to talk about Miranda. You don't get to ignore the truth. We don't like this any more than you do. The Takana are a threat to all of us. They turned our crewmates too. Do you really think they're gonna stop there? All I know is that more of my people have been lost to the transformation than yours. Not to mention my admiral and the others who didn't survive your rescue attempt. Our losses are mounting. Yours are just beginning. We're stuck on this ship, same as you. I'm blocked out of helm control. Propulsion? And they're closing down systems faster than I can check them. Ah. Ah. They're always changing these interfaces. I can hardly keep up. Let us help. Fine. They're using a senior officer's access code to lock down our systems from the bridge. The Takan must have turned someone in command. You're something. I can see the course they have plotted in. The Lydian fleet has explored a lot of systems, but it's all in the opposite direction of where we're going. The Zeldi. That's where we are. That's not exactly news. Long way from Hotari space. I hope the Resolute is all right back there. We're headed to the edge of the galaxy. Nothing but uninhabited systems along the way. And if we keep going, we'll leave charted space. A lot sooner than I like to think about, too. That can't happen. We need to take control and turn this ship around. Get back to the front lines of the battle for Olivia. We are on the front lines. They're going to do this all over the Quadrant. The whole Federation is at risk. That is a possibility, but it's already a reality for my people. I'm sure it's pretty damn real for the people who are trapped in their own bodies controlled by the Takan. You can't just turn your back on them. I'll take this ship without you if I have to. And I'll bring it back to Olivia, or I'll destroy it. I won't let it stay in the hands of the enemy. Think strategically. We stand a better chance by working together. You're right to be angry. But it doesn't do any good to turn it on us. Fair enough. The most important thing is that we get control of this ship. So that we don't end up so far away that the Resolute can't ever catch up to us. And if we control the Zeldi, that also means they can't use that Cartabula thing. I'm not sure we can do much more from here. What's this? It's a data stream. It looks to be a two-way communication. Let me see if I could put it through a demultiplexing processor. Can you get that clearer? I'm trying.
Okay. That should do it. Hello. Can you read me? It's Tosker. Is that you? Major. It's my lieutenant. Where are you? I'm here with some of the others. We're trapped in the ATP. Our artillery targeting platform. The bulkheads are sealed. And ruptured power conduits on the other side are discharging at high voltage. Major, we've seen Sidron and the other Atari. And if we can get free, I think we'll be able to overpower them and take back the ship. Itasca, are you still there? Itasca, are you still there? You shouldn't trust anyone else you meet. The Hotari have been transforming people on this ship. We've seen it happen. Bioforming. It's only a matter of time before any remaining crew are turned against us. You have to come and help us. I gotta ask, are you sure that's really your comrade? It's Itasca. You're going to have to trust me. I know Lieutenant Itasca well. That's her. Clear and not under duress beyond our current circumstances. I'm sure of it. Trust goes both ways. We trust you. We trust us. I'll go with that. Until you give me reason not to. I got you, Stretch. We'll make it to you undetected and we'll free you from the ATP. We'll be ready and waiting, sir. I may not know the computers very well, but I know every inch of this ship. I can get us there, safely, through the back routes. Approach. Your Majesty, an apology is in order. The Federation... Spare us your apologies, your excuses, your pathetic explanations. You said you were here under the pretense of peace, yet you trespassed into our minds. I should have known you were lying when you said the Hotari should have control of the minds. <laughs> Just a ruse to conceal your true intentions. We knew you were hiding something. We had to find the truth. I hope you were satisfied with what you found. Your Majesty, if I may... Her actions nearly caused a war. I was addressing the Queen. Galvin speaks for the Hotari now. Fortunately, we were able to resolve this ourselves despite your interference. The Illidians have agreed the mines will remain under Hotari control. We now recognize the Hotari as the sole authority in this region. Your presence here is no longer necessary. So you can consider the matter resolved. They never wanted the Federation involved. This was all just a ploy from the start. We never needed the Federation involved. But we're so thankful that you've come. That being said, the sooner you leave, the better. The hell we will. What about my crew trapped aboard that ship? Or what you did to my security team. The data you stole. I want to make one thing clear. No one is to leave Hotari space without Federation approval. No one. You think you have that power, when in fact you have none. You came here under the presumption you would be the ultimate authority. That you would show up and render judgment in this petty dispute over precious resources between lesser people. But instead, your arrogance and self-interest was your undoing. Blinding you to the real power at work here. Something far beyond your feeble imagination. The Federation's only interest was the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We believe everyone has the fundamental right to live their lives as they choose. Spare me your primitive altruism. The Federation involves itself because it has the power to do so. Without power, 
the Federation would have nothing. Let's not kid ourselves. Peace is the last thing they want. Commander Rydag saw what you did in those mines. How you bioformed innocent people against their will and turned them into Takan. Takan. A word I haven't heard in a very long time. At the height of our power, the Takan Empire spanned hundreds of thousands of light years and trillions of Takonians. An empire that encompassed what is now considered Federation territory. What's yours was once ours, so it feels only right that we reclaim what was lost. Everything you hold dear will be gone. The first of many painful losses to come. You do realize this will never work. The Federation will stop you no matter what it takes. Will they? From what I can tell, the Federation is little more than a loose assemblage of the weak and the misguided. But I certainly invite them to try. You might be surprised how many want to be part of the most advanced civilization the galaxy has ever seen. We will not stop until we've reclaimed what is rightfully ours. Imagine what a queen, a starship captain, or even a Federation ambassador could accomplish if their power was wielded by a truly superior entity. In the face of such impossible odds against an adversary so clearly more advanced in every way, the only logical choice is to submit. Never. Seize them. Get us out of here, now! Ride it to Resolute. Beam us out. You ever done something like this before? Close quarters combat? Infiltrating an enemy stronghold? Something like that. I once spent six days crawling through sewers during the siege of Tofar Ket to retake the Citadel there. That's just one of many campaigns I've served in. My dress uniform is well decorated. I can assure you of that. I'm glad we're here with you. We need your kind of experience. I should say you do. And I'll be glad to have Lieutenant Itasca with us. She fought shoulder to shoulder with me in that siege. So you're pretty close, huh? She's like... A daughter to me. She's saved my life more than once. She's more than just a comrade in arms. Don't worry. We'll get her and the others free. I'll worry less when that's been done. But once we have my comrades, proper soldiers, we'll be able to retake the bridge. Then, our fleets will catch up to us. The ATP is just down that corridor. Is this the artillery platform? This is the power distribution for the forward armament cluster. There was combat here. Disruptor burns on the walls. Signs of a grenade detonation. There was a fight that Takan might still be nearby. Maybe my people killed them. Or they could be waiting for us. Then that's a problem for when we meet them. The distribution conduits have been knocked loose. The currents in those lines would be lethal. Is there any way to power those down? Each circuit has a control panel that regulates power to the magneto banks. I can track connections between the power lines and the control panels. I should be able to clear a safe path to your crew. We'll get the door open here. It's heavy.
Federation, you made it. Barely. There's a lot of collateral damage out here. They backed us into a corner. We did that to drive them out. Put some space between us and the enemy. Ah! They're here. Get down! I think they've given up on capture. We'll never make it if we go back that way. You! Give me a hand with this! live. To fight. We let the enemy take them. Hadri and Private Turo. They weren't the only ones. But if we hadn't, it would have been all of us. I'll have to live with that, and I'll answer for it when I die. It's not the Illidian way to leave one of our own behind. It's a sin to do so. We've lost people too. I know it's not easy. What makes it worse is that when we were in there, trapped, Hadri is the one who said that we had to live to fight. And we all agreed. We said, if one of us was taken, the others wouldn't stop. We'd keep going, make our way to the bridge. They died so we could fight on. The Takan don't want them dead. They want to steal their bodies. And steal their minds. The Takan knows everything the host knows. That means they know our plan. They know we're heading to the bridge. Hylas, you should be in sickbay. I'll finish this. I couldn't just lie there knowing the entire fate of Hotari hangs in the balance. How did it go? You look exhausted. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty rough. Oh no. 
That's what I was afraid of. I heard a rumor that they'd made a deal, that the Elidians agreed to peace. After what we saw Sidron do to the diplomat in the mines, I could hardly believe there was hope, but then... Is that true? There is a deal. The Elidians did agree to peace, and the Hotari have retained control of the mines. That's incredible. I, I never thought it was possible. How did that happen? It all looked so bleak. I thought the Elidians would never agree. Galvin bioformed the Elidians into Takan. What? But... But what about the Queen? Or the Hotari people? Please tell me they're okay. That there's something the Federation can do. Of course, we're doing everything we can. The entire Federation stands with the Hotari, and we will stop at nothing to make this right. But I want you to prepare yourself, in case it's too late to save Hotari. Where will I go? I can't go back. I don't have a home anymore. Everything I've ever known is gone. You're always safe aboard this ship. And you're welcome to stay as long as you need. Thank you. The Federation stands with the Hotari. You don't have to doubt it for a second. Yellow, alert. Commander Rydick, we need you on the bridge immediately. We've got an Elidian ship, the Veskar, rapidly bearing down on our position. Or what was the Veskar? Now I'm not so sure. Bring it up on the view screen. 600 kilometers in closing. Still coming straight for us. Hmm. Commander? Have you tried hailing them? Try it. Hailing the Elidian ship now. No response. 400 kilometers in closing. Shields up. Ready, phasers. Shields up. Phasers ready. It's incoming. Lock phasers and open fire. Heavy damage. But deflectors still at full power? That bypassed our shields entirely. That's impossible. God damn it, return fire. Everything we've got. Right, it. Modulate the shield frequencies. See if you can get us any cover. Commander, I've got I... this. Just keep firing. Shields still have no effect. That doesn't make sense. I'll try another. There. We've got incoming! How do they keep matching our shield frequency? They couldn't. Unless... They've compromised our shield algorithms. They can bypass our shields at will. What? Ah! Ah! Captain! Uh, he's out cold! Why'd they stop? Damage report. Running on emergency power. Major hull damage on decks four through seven. Warp core is stable and intact. We're completely vulnerable. Commander, we're being held by the Veskar. It's Galvin. On screen. Commander Rydak, where's your captain? Not dead, I hope. At least, not yet. Sorry to disappoint you, but he's alive and well. Good. I wouldn't want him to miss out on any of this. I have to give you credit, Commander. You survived longer than I thought you would. But make no mistake, your shields are useless, your weapons ineffective, and there's nothing you can do. I could destroy you at any moment. 
I'd rather hear your pleas for mercy first. Your existence is entirely in my hands, and I'm not in a forgiving mood. It's entirely possible you could destroy us. But the truth is, we're worth more to you alive than dead. Better if we report back to Starfleet about the power of Taconian technology, and the futility of fighting it. There might be value in that. I've been thinking about what you said, Commander. That the Federation would stop me no matter what. Your performance in this encounter has not supported that claim. The Veskar's weapons are powering up. Appreciate your mercy. And you rely on it. I've lost their signal. Can you track their warp signature? Nothing. It's untraceable. Just like before. Notify Ambassador Spock. I want everyone in the briefing room to discuss our options. What's the status of the repairs? Hull breach should be patched up in a matter of hours. Impulse power is at 67%. Should be fully restored soon. Still no luck tracking Galvin's warp signature. They've all but disappeared. Keep trying. Finding that son of a bitch is the best shot we've got. Commander Ryder, you had the con after the ship was attacked. What is your assessment? Given our current situation, and the losses we have suffered. I'd rather not fight this alone. We need to call for reinforcements. In that case, we might have an option. Portal 6-3, guardian of the Takan Empire. If anyone could find Galvin, it would be him. That's assuming he's willing to help us. True, but there's only one way to find out. Wouldn't we need to secure authorization from the Federation Council to contact him? The nearest Federation outpost is Andoria. I can travel there by shuttle and inform them personally of the threat from the Takan. Meanwhile, the Resolute can travel to the Delphi Ardu system in search of Portal 63. I still have my doubts. I do not. Captain William T. Riker has first hand experience with the area and with Portal 63. His guidance will prove invaluable and should alleviate your concerns. Delphi Ardu 4 is a restricted zone for good reason. For all we know, we could be walking into a trap. Not to mention the high likelihood Portal 6-3's allegiance will be with the Takan. It's just too much of a risk. A waste of time. Time we can't afford to lose. Right now, we have no way of knowing where those two Elidian ships are or where they're going. Another Taconian might be able to at least point us in the right direction. Or we're the ones pointing him right toward his fellow Takan, making the problem worse. I am inclined to agree with Commander Rydek. Her logic is sound. This portal may have knowledge that proves to be invaluable, including information on the nature of the Cartabula. We must act on the facts at hand. Then we'll give it our best. I'll arrange a meeting with Captain Riker. And I will speak with the Council. They need to understand the magnitude of the situation. I can leave for Andoria immediately. I wish you luck finding Portal 63. The very future of the Federation may rest in your hands. It takes a minimum of eight crew on the bridge to run the ship. So we can expect at least that many hostiles. If they bioformed Hadri, 
They know we're coming. Which means everyone needs to be ready for... Take cover! Now what? We need that door sealed. We can handle that. Where do you need us? There's an access panel there. You should be able to patch into the local systems. We'll be shot getting there. I'll cover you. On my signal. Now! Looking for the bridge doors. Wait, what's this? Got something? Gravity. If I invert the artificial gravity inside the bridge, that'll throw anyone on the bridge right up into the ceiling. He'll never see it coming. Itasuka, get ready to charge! Charge? Or some gravity polarity. Now! Amazing. Close in. How do we get them down? What are we gonna do with them? We don't have time to take prisoners. So you're just gonna shoot them? I haven't decided yet. That's not just up to you. I'm the ranking officer. And we're not in your army. It may not be convenient, but we don't kill enemies who've surrendered. Keeping prisoners is a luxury we don't have. <laughs> it's not a damn luxury. You're an engineer, not a soldier. This is clearly my territory. You think you have enemy combatants here? This is a hostage situation. Each one of them has an innocent life inside. I'll keep watch on them. As will I. We can't let our guard down around the enemy. Petty Officer Diaz and I will figure out how to stop the ship. Let's hurry. The rest of the Takai could show up any minute. Crystals. Place. Look here. It's navigational data. We saw that already. Headed to the edge of the galaxy. It's only a display. We couldn't use it to change course or alter speed. days to go this distance with our fastest ship. We're traveling at a warp factor many times greater than this ship should even be capable of. What are the engines doing to produce this kind of speed? the rest of their tech. Tetrametric pulses. Tetrametric? It's the energy signature of Takan technology. Everything they make gives off this type of radiation. They're blocking the inputs. It's not responding at all. Everything I try, it just ignores me. I thought you had the access codes needed to take control back. I should, but I can't actually get to the surface. So I can't enter them here. Maybe there's somewhere else I can try.
this out before we get wherever we're going. If the Resolute can't catch up to us, we're in a whole different kind of trouble. There are two interfaces on top of each other. This... this is not a Lydian programming. language. From what I can tell, the ship's systems are actively responding to input. Which is the opposite of how most bridges work. They usually send commands, not receive them. It's from an intrusive program. This control station won't do us any good either. What have they done to this bridge? Consoles running themselves, some clogged up with crystals that are sending off tetrametric pulses. But none of this is sending signals outward. It's receiving. They're flying the ship from somewhere else. That should be impossible. But it explains why there's less than a full bridge crew. If they aren't flying the ship from the bridge, where are they controlling it from? Yes. We used to Khan haven't made a move. Yet. And what you're doing is working. There's plenty more I can do. But it doesn't have to be that way. As long as they behave. Careful where you point that thing. It's not active. I can't see any way this would work as a weapon. It's dead. Out of ammo? Not sure. Where's the captain? Captain Ostego did not survive the atmosphere poisoning. I'm sorry to hear that. He died defending the Empire. That's how he'd want it. This console looks unaffected. The engine's a red line, running at full power. But this main drive manifold is spiking way over nominal levels. Very dangerous. Even at 100% output, the warp cores wouldn't push this much plasma to the drive section. The reactor output matches the high speed, doesn't it? Whether it's these crystals, or the power from the cartabula, the Takana found a way to increase the engine output at top speed. We have to find a way to hit the brakes before we outrun anyone who could help us. We stop it, so they can't get this ship where they're going, and enact the next phase of their plan. That is, if they don't destroy us all first. I would have thought this ship would disintegrate going this speed. So what is their endgame? They've transformed individuals, they've transformed this ship, in a way. How far will they go? As far as we let them. The technology certainly doesn't seem to have limits. I hate to think what the Cartabula could do if it was plugged into something it was meant to power. That's everything. Got some answers. I don't like what they tell us, though. If we can learn nothing else, then what's left is to make these Takan talk. And if they don't, we'll dispose of them. Hey, that's not how we do this. That is enough from you. <laughs> I thought that thing was useless. It was. No power. Until he touched it. Weapons must 
be biocoded. Our technology will only work for one of our kind. I can assure you, this weapon works just fine for me. Slow down, Armita. <laughs> you can't control this ship with a disruptor. But I can use it to control you. Ah! The Titan's communications officer says Captain Riker will be ready in just a moment. You need to see this. The report on the data breach. Damn. It's worse than I'd hoped. They didn't just compromise our shields. They stole the shield algorithms for all of Starfleet as well. Meaning every ship is potentially vulnerable to attack. Making this so much worse than it already was. Given the potential consequences, we should notify Starfleet as soon as possible. I don't disagree, but uh, I'll reach out to Ambassador Spock about it. I don't want to cause a panic, and I doubt he does either. I have Captain Riker for you. Let's not mention any of this S.H.I.E.L.D. business to Riker just yet. Put him through. Captain Riker. This is my first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. My pleasure. Sir. I wish we were all meeting under better circumstances. So do I, although you and I have actually met before. We have. I was a young lieutenant on the Potemkin. You were first officer on the Tuckerman. I piloted you and our science officer in a shuttle to survey quantum residence in the planetary rings of Residia 6. Ah, oh, yes. Now I remember. You know, he gave me some... Good advice that day about a very difficult job. Yours. Well, I'm not one to turn down some words of wisdom, sir. Then let me ask, as first officer on a starship, where does your responsibility lie, first and foremost? To the captain, the crew, or the ship itself? Oh, this old chestnut. I am curious to hear what she says, though. Well... Without the ship, we'd be in a lot of trouble. So... Anybody ever choose the ship when you ask? I can't say that they have. The truth is, it's a trick question. Every situation is different, and there are no easy answers. And in some cases, it might not be any of those three. It could be the Prime Directive. Or the mission. Yes, so perhaps we should get to the matter at hand. When you were with the Enterprise, you encountered a Takan entity known as Portal 63. The Enterprise was held captive in orbit until you were able to convince him to let the ship go. All of which is detailed in the mission report. What we want from you is what we can't get from the report. What can we use to get Portal 63 to help us? I've often thought about that over the years. How a small difference in the encounter could have led to disaster. The most important thing is, don't let him push you around. He can appear as a man, or as a godlike projection. He'll test you, but don't be overwhelmed by the pageantry and theatrics. I'll stand up to him. You can trust in that. Good, but that's just the first step. Portal is full of bluster and bravado, but he can be reasoned with. And that's my other piece of advice. You want to appeal to him rationally. You don't want him thinking you're acting out of fear. But we are afraid of the Takan, and with good reason. He's not the sort to suffer fools. And he'll lose interest if he feels his time is being wasted. I suppose that's one thing we have in common. Do you think he knows that the Takan have returned? He didn't even know they were gone when we went there. But the moment the Enterprise dropped into orbit around Delphi Ardu 4, he downloaded the entirety of the ship's computer. So I'd expect the same when you get there. What if he won't cooperate and we have to face these to con ourselves? Then we have a much bigger problem on our hands. What I mean is, in the 16 years since you discovered this outpost, there has to have been research, battle plans for what to do about the Takan if we encountered more of them. I need to know what they are. If I had that answer, it would have been the first thing I told you. We both know Command has had their share of hidden plans in the past. 
like Admiral Hansen and Captain Shelby's Special Projects Division at Starfleet Tactical, devising new ways to take on the board. Trust me, this isn't some Starfleet conspiracy to keep you in the dark. But if you two don't think you're equipped to make contact, you need to tell me now. Because there is no silver bullet here. Now's not the time to hesitate. I need to know you're up to this. There are some things you can't be prepared for. And if there are no specific tactical solutions, we'll just have to take our chances. After all, risk is our business. We try to mitigate that risk as best we can. But the Starfleet we know today is built on that attitude. Hmm. Well said. There was a special task force that considered the Takan, and I was part of it. But because there were no other signs of the Empire, we determined the best course of action was to create a restricted zone around the Delphi Ardu system. I have my concerns, but I'll clear the way with the brass for your travel into the restricted space. Just remember what I've told you. And it wouldn't hurt to read some Sun Tzu en route. Or Marcus Aurelius. Anything else? Machiavelli? Your advice is well taken, Captain Riker. No matter what he throws at us, we'll stand up to this Takan Guardian. I'm sure you will. Rest assured, the Federation is taking this threat very seriously. You won't be alone out there for too long. Thank you, Captain Riker. One more thing. Ambassador Spock said that Takan stole some data from your central computer. What's that all about? We're still assessing the extent of the breach. Nothing to report as of right now. That's it? Ambassador Spock suggested it was something more serious. Which is why I'm asking. One thing we know is that they stole Starfleet shield algorithms. The shield algorithms? That could jeopardize every ship in the fleet. We're still making sure our assessment is accurate. We don't want to raise alarms unnecessarily. This is as real as it gets, Solano. I have to talk to Starfleet Command now, so I think this conversation has come to an end. I really do hope you get Portal 6-3 and find those to Khan before this gets out of control. Riker out. I specifically said I wanted to keep this under wraps. I thought we had an understanding. Now all of Starfleet will hear about this. Riker's ship is at risk. They all are. I can't believe you would want to keep that from him. That's one more thing I'll have to answer for. Now I have to think about the damage control of it all. You're dismissed. It's the Automated Federation warning buoy. Transmitting the disable code Captain Riker provided. That was unpleasant. Commander Ermont, what are the conditions of our systems? All internal systems operational. Commander Westbrook, what are your scans of the planet? Nothing out of the ordinary. No sign of this outrageously powerful Takan being? I'm running a magneton scan now, but so far, nothing. Where are you? Prep your way, team. We don't know if Portal 6-3 will cooperate. He's not an asset, he's an enemy. So be ready for anything. Prove you're worth <laughs> keeping alive for a little while longer. I cannot stop this ship. Not good enough. The impotent threats of a lower life form do not sway me. I will not bend to you. I was born 600,000 years ago. But a new age dawns today. Are you the scion of the flame? My name is Zan Utlosa. I was born in the final days of the age of Mokto. We are all scions of the flame. Every one of us who have traveled across the Bridge of Time to be here for the Great Awakening. We have all sworn ourselves to the cause. Eventually, one of you will break. You don't understand how overmatched you truly are. 
This craft was nothing before we imbued it with the speed required by our mission. And the Cartabula produces enough energy to drive an entire fleet of ships like this one. But when we wake the Aphelion, we won't need a fleet. The Aphelion? Only then will you understand the might of the Takan Empire. Reborn in this time. And when you wake the Aphelion, what are you going to do with it? Anything we want. Come on! This goes from bad to worse unless you do what they say. <laughs> can't stop the ship. Then he will. Or we cut off his hands and use them ourselves. The moment I reduce speed or change our heading, the others will. First, they'll just resume course from elsewhere. Trivial matter. And then, they will come here. For you. This is a dead end. That's a risk I'm willing to take. Not if they're just going to start it again. So you believe him? I'm not sure. Why would you tell us all this? I tell you because I value my own life. When my fellow sirens come, and they will come, I expect you'll all act like the savages you are and a battle once. You've all died once. I don't intend to do so again. I won't touch those controls. If you want to get us killed, do it yourselves. You fear death. There's a way to stop this ship for good. And he knows how. It just needs more pressure. What kind of pressure? We heard him. He'll talk. Trust me. That's against Starfleet protocol. You're not on a Starfleet ship. Your protocol does not apply. We take the action that will lead to our victory. Don't assume your moral code takes precedence above all others. I get the impression you know how to make people talk. Think you can break his arm? No, don't! What the hell, Carter? We don't torture people! Did you forget what uniform you're wearing? What it stands for? This isn't like you. I just hope Kapoor didn't feel that. That... that doesn't make it better. I have only just begun. Stop! Please! Wait! The warp cores. Our technology is amplifying the ship's output, and it still relies on the warp cores to provide plasma to the engines. Disable those, and the ship grinds to a halt. Sabotage. This displays for all life forms on the ship. This is where the infiltrators are, the central artery of ship systems, sensors, propulsion, weapons. And this is engineering. It's deserted. If I can get us there, can you cripple my ship? Not something I'd normally ask, but I'm coming around to it. Well, usually I'm the guy fixing the things that go wrong on a starship. I'm sure I can figure out a way to break it. You may even find you like destroying things. This plan of yours has one problem. It strands us. Left out of the fight when there is a war going on. Our fight is here, now. This is how we do the most good. For the Empire. For the Empire. So, Carter, you didn't beam out after all. I thought you'd escaped when we boarded. I had almost hoped you'd made it off. And Millie's there with you too, right? It's good you two are together. Believe me, I don't want to be here either. It looks like neither of us get our way. But Carter, I am going to get my way. You're not a fighter. I know it. You know it. That's why you're hiding. Somewhere on this ship. But the Takan Empire has so much to offer you. Think of all the knowledge lost for half a million years that you'd have access to. I know you want more from life, and I want to show you what you could be a part of. Not just the wonders you've already seen from us, 
In our time, we had the power to move stars. Carter, you have a thirst for discovery. In case you forgot, we were a part of something. I still am. The Federation may not be perfect, but it stands for ideals that your people clearly do not believe in. We have our own ideals. And we have our own strength. Every one of us on this crusade has fought wars more brutal and consuming than you could fathom. But I want to reach a peaceful resolution to this. Carter, we have a plan for you. And for the others, too. We don't want to have to destroy you. What, you think there's some sort of compromise to be had here? After all you've done? The only end of this is when you surrender. After all we've done? You can't think we give up now. We can continue this conversation in person. I'll see you on the bridge very soon. Our comm badges. She's tracking our location with them. If we have to use force to free our fellow Scions, there will be casualties. We can't stay here. And we need to disable the transmitters. Where'd you go? You don't want to talk to me? She's trying to keep you talking. I mean, I get it. But I'm trying to help you. Got it. Mine's done too. Time to hit the road. You've forgotten something. They know where we're going. Set to stun. You're not going to shoot a guy who's unconscious, are you? You keep getting in my way. You already broke his arm. What more do you want to do? I want to eliminate loose ends. And I did that for you. You two forget you're on the same side? Come on! Now let's move it. Our coordinates match the exact location where Riker met Portal 63. Unlike Riker's team, we beam down without a problem. It's quiet. Portal has to know we're here. If he won't come to us, we'll go to him. Spread out. Already gave it a scan. Dead. The whole planet feels like it's been turned to stone. Doctor? Commander? Keeping an eye on those Duridium levels? Good. Last thing we need are your cells destabilizing on a hostile alien planet. Marks. The report mentioned phaser fire being redirected toward these strange crystals. It also mentioned Portal calling down lightning bolts. Better keep our guards up. Anything unusual, Commander? It's all unusual, to be honest. We have precious little data on this planet, so brief was Captain Riker's visit. Anything he didn't see himself is a total unknown. We deal with unknowns all the time. Part of the job. I'm accustomed to dealing with the unknown from my station on the bridge. If I recall right, Geordi LaForge transported in here, hanging upside down. I guess we're lucky we were spared the indignity.
This is where Portal 6-3 projected his image. He was guarding this bridge. That has to mean something. We'll move forward when you're ready, Commander. Follow me. M's here. Is it me, or did that path just disappear? There was a path there a moment ago. There must be an explanation. Tetrametric pulses. Same energy as the other Takan technology. Most of the crystals appear dormant. What's different about this one? Readings indicate there's a cavity in the rock right behind it. We could try melting a hole through the wall with our phasers. Worth a try. I'm sure that wall was as real as the rest of them. I felt it. It's almost like our holodeck technology, but far more advanced. The crystals must be absorbing the energy from our phasers. I'm picking up something. A biosignature. It's faint, but it's there. With me. Another dead end. Or another illusion. Crewman LaRue, if you would. <laughs> Devolve to Resolute. Beam Crewman LaRue directly to medical. Is he okay? Yeah. He'll live. Not all crystals work the same, it seems. Don't fire your phasers at any crystals unless we're sure they're putting out the same pulses as before. Looks like there used to be a bridge here. Aside from the breathable atmosphere, this is a remarkably inhospitable planet. Traces indicate there was once living flora, but it's been dead so long it's practically turned to stone. From what Portal told Riker, it was an outpost to defend the far edge of the Takan Empire. Well, it's not that now. Now, it's a grave. Tetrametric. Good sign. Commander! Look at that. Trust, but verify. Indeed. I don't have any data about what's below the surface on Delphi Ardu 4. And I don't feel a particularly strong urge to find out. Then that makes two of us. I wonder if this place was always so lifeless.
I assume you've noticed the bridge we crossed to get here is no longer tangible. Ah, bit of a problem. If logic prevails, there's a way to get it back by finding the right crystal to phaser. I'm getting some faint tetrametric readings from inside that mountain. Then I'll head over there. And I'll stay here, in case the bridge decides to come back. Good. Tetrametric. Better go see what's different. Is clear. Good work, Commander. We'll make sure it's safe. Incredible. The plants here are actually alive. Is this the biosignature you detected, Doctor? No. Not a match. Tetrametric. Then it's creating an illusion as well. Based on the data we have so far, only one thing left to do. Doctor, be ready to beam us out if it turns out we're wrong. Devolve to Resolute. Lock transporter on away team. in any Federation record. The plants. Barbarians. It's him. How dare you disturb me? 
I'd hoped you had enough sense to leave of your own accord, but here you stand. <laughs> Fools. In another time, I would have destroyed you and your ship simply for setting foot in this place. Fortunately for you, that time has passed. Portal 6-3, Guardian of the Takan Empire. We've come a long way to meet you. Guardian? I am Guardian of nothing. The Takan no longer exist. Don't care to be reminded. If this is why you've come, then you should leave. Now. We need your help. My help? You're the only one we can ask. You're hiding something. Futile. The Resolute's database is being accessed. The Takan have returned? After so long, how could they explain? Now. Taconian technology made it possible to enable the transfer of consciousness from one being to another after physical death. We call it bioforming. A group of Taconians calling themselves Scions of the Flame used it to reawaken after hundreds of millennia. Science of the Flame? Is something wrong? I'd hardly call them Takan. They were a radical faction with beliefs outside the mainstream. Beliefs that lesser life forms should serve as vessels to ensure Takan immortality. You want me to help you destroy them? That's why you've come. You want to destroy these Scions. There is a war looming that could engulf the Quadrant. We want you to help us bring about peace before it gets to that point. Peace always comes at a cost. They have an incredibly powerful energy source they call the Cartabula. These Scions have the Cartabula. And they've used it as a weapon against us. I will speak with you alone. What are you... Where's my team? They are safe where we left them. That the Scions have stolen the Cartabula is deeply concerning. And to be honest, I'd rather speak with you alone, John Rydeck. don't know what it means to be the last of one's kind. You and I are remnants of fallen civilizations. The Kobliad, the Takan. One dying, one dead. Our species could not be more different, but we both know the meaning of loss. The others wouldn't understand. It's beyond their ability to comprehend. We're more alike than you might realize, in that we accept the inevitability of loss. If only you understood the glory of the Decon Empire's past. Tell me, why spend your days away from your own people when so few of them are left? Why live your life working for this federation to which the Coplia do not even belong? And submit yourself to their authority? It makes no sense. Not by my logic. The federation isn't an authority to be obeyed. At its heart, it's a set of principles meant to ensure the survival and safety of all species regardless of their origin. You told Riker you'd wait until you were needed. You're needed now. We need you. As much as it pains me to learn the Cartabula has fallen into the hands of the Scions, my services are not up for offer.
To be chosen as a portal was to give one's entire self to the cause of protecting the Dukon Empire. I left behind everything I know. And now you want me to turn against my own people. The betrayal of my oath. And everything I vowed to protect. The Takan had their time. The Empire rose and fell like so many others. What you call bioforming, we thought of as a marginal science. But if these reborn Takan plan to restore the Empire, is that a disaster to be avoided? Taconian technology is so advanced, it could save millions of species currently on the brink of extinction, including your own. And at the price of a small few, think of how the many could benefit. Instead, it sounds as if you are reacting out of fear before you have a full understanding of what's at stake. I don't think you've given this full consideration. You may have more to gain than to lose. The Takan Empire is gone. It had its opportunity and proved unable to survive. There must have been a reason the Takan have faded to a distant memory. It ran its course. And those of us who are here now deserve to choose our own fate. You said the Takan vanished for a reason. I cannot claim our empire was without sin. I'm curious to see these scions masquerading as true Takan. So I will go with you and we shall find them. But when we do, I will judge them myself as a guardian of the Takan to understand their true intentions, for better or worse. It's certainly your right to make your own decisions. I won't tell you otherwise. Very well. I'll return. Commander! Hold your fire. I'm all right. He's coming with us. We assumed the worst. She's perfectly fine. Now then, shall we? All right. We can beam up your... Do you have any equipment or tools? Team plus one, ready to beam up. Four warp cores? That's... Interesting. Redundancy. If one goes down in battle, it can still operate. Makes this more difficult, though. This ship can maintain warp with half the cores offline. We'll need to disable three of them. Where are the engine schematics? Power flow routing charts. We're soldiers, not engineers. I thought you would know what to do. All that talk about being soldiers, and look what it comes down to. You need a couple of engineers. Yes, we do. Lucky for you, that's our specialty. You at least know where we should start? This way.
really hot. Makes sense, since they've been producing at max output since we left Hotari space. No ship can run for very long like that. Not before a catastrophic failure hits. It's right on the edge. We just need to figure out a way to give it a push. Bet that console down there could tell us a few things. we do, we need to make sure the Takan can't undo it. So we need a way to permanently disable the reactors that won't destroy the ship and kill us all in the process. You thinking what I'm thinking? War, War core ejection. So the question is, how do we make it happen? The reactor coolant system is operating at emergency containment levels. It's just barely keeping the temperature in check. Maybe we can use that. If it gets this high, their system considers a reactor breach imminent. Like we saw on the bridge, all four warp cores are operating at full capacity. The safety protocols don't look much different from the Resolute. Breach protection. Reduce output, command override. Cease matter, antimatter flow, command override. Emergency warp core ejection. Computer control. Even command functions can't override one of the most crucial safety measures. So the protocol's still active. That's good. Looks like if sensors show a core is about to rupture, the computer will eject it automatically rather than risk a breach. So we need to increase the warp core's temperatures. If we destroy the coolant regulators, there won't be anything to keep these reactors from going over. And it will trigger the ejection. Let's peel these suckers open. I'll take that one. I'll take the one next to it. The second you two start dumping cores, the Takan will know we're here. We'll be vulnerable. Stuck in one place while you work. We will have to make a stand. Start thinking about an escape plan. I have a feeling we're gonna need one. We'll barricade the door. Work quickly. We might not have our tools, but our phasers can do this in a pinch. We better get this right. If we foul it up and this whole thing goes boom... We don't know how much damage that cartabula will do if we accidentally crack it open. Yeah, look on the bright side. If it all goes to hell, we won't be around to see the fallout. That certainly inspires confidence. It's not a Starfleet warp core, but the coolant regulator has to be in here somewhere. up. Warning. Warning. Warp core output at critical level. Ejecting core. Okay. Now they're definitely gonna know we're down here. Warp core output at critical level. Ejecting core. There's one more to go. They're here. They're cutting through the door. We don't have much time. Okay, same as before. We just got it.
Grounds of Sorella, my friend. You too. Calm yourself, child. It will all be better soon. still something I can do for Itasca, and I shall. So much I want to ask you. There's so little I can tell you. I'm a portal, not a scientist, but I'll certainly do my best. I can only assume this is one of your older starships. One would think, given the importance of your mission, they might send a ship of a more recent vintage. But, uh, <clears throat> apparently not. The Resolute is primarily a research vessel, if that's what you mean. Not a warship. Although, she has been known to hold her own in a fight. Against what? Something wrong? Not at all. 
The galaxy has grown more diverse since the days of the Takan Empire. Because you conquered everyone who didn't look like you. To the contrary. Most lesser civilizations willingly join the Empire to enjoy the benefits of an advanced way of life. But that expansion came with its own set of problems, so... I admire your ability to diversify without creating conflict. That was always our challenge. And perhaps, ultimately, our downfall. The Federation prides itself on its inclusiveness. I'd say it's one of our greatest strengths. As the Vulcans say, infinite diversity in infinite combinations. Interesting. I'd be curious to meet one of these Vulcans. If this is the best you have, then so be it. To locate this scion, Galvan, I'll need full access to your ship's systems. Full access? Huh. You must be out of your mind. No, I'm right here, completely in my mind. Given this is merely a research ship, I won't be able to find him without it. Perhaps I should have made that clear up front. I'll need to make certain modifications. I can't promise anything, but let me see what I can do. Just know, without it, I won't be able to help you. This isn't gonna fly. I'll see you on the bridge. Captain Solano, I'd like to introduce you to Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Pleasure to meet you, Captain. Likewise. I can't say I've ever met a portal before. There is no modern equivalent. Not within the Federation, at least. We are incredibly lucky that Portal has agreed to join us. Your first officer makes a very persuasive argument. So I've noticed. You spent 600,000 years at your posts. That certainly takes an uncommon level of dedication. We all have our duty. Of course. But I'm curious. You were stationed there in preparation for what, exactly? Any and all threats to the Empire. An Empire that no longer exists. Which suggests you weren't very successful. You said you needed my help. I didn't come here to be insulted. Perhaps that was a mistake. I'd be happy to return to Delphi Ardu at any time. And we do need your help. Absolutely. And we are grateful that you decided to come. And your captain has an odd way of expressing his gratitude. I'm merely curious where your allegiances might lie. And clearly it's with the Takan. Yes, Captain. You have found me out and exposed my true loyalties to the Takan, not to the Scions of the Flame, who do nothing more than tarnish us in name and reputation and don't deserve to be called Takan. That's why I'm here. And if you'd be so kind as to give me access to your ship's systems, we can get on with it. And you can stop wasting my time. Access to our systems? That's completely out of the question. Tell me that's not what you promised. We're vulnerable enough as it is. And now we're supposed to give him access to everything? Ridiculous. Captain, I understand your concern, and I don't necessarily disagree. Ah, now I understand your reluctance. I never imagined offering to help would be met with such ignorance. If you're not enjoying your visit to our ship, We'd be more than happy to let you wither away back on your pathetic little rock. Captain? You clearly do not appreciate the magnitude of the threat the science pose. So myopic is your focus on your own ego. I will not be leaving until they have been found. Commander Ryder, a word. And to think. I waited 600,000 years for this. You realize this puts me in an incredibly difficult position. I was against seeking him out from the start, but now, to give him access to our systems? It's insane. And you somehow expect me to believe his allegiance is with us? You heard what he said in there. 
There's no way we can trust him. It's entirely possible. We don't really know where his loyalties lie, which is why we should proceed with caution. Keep a close eye on his every move. We can't afford to get this wrong. We sought him out for a reason. To help him find our missing crew, Galvin, and those Elidian ships. This is the plan we agreed to with Ambassador Spock. Which I never liked. But here we are. You know what this mission means to us. Not just for the Federation, but for me personally. I can't afford another screw-up. Losing the shield algorithms was bad enough. This... This could be the end of my career. Captain, you have my word. I will do everything within my power to protect you. I appreciate that. It's not just my career on the line here. It's both of ours. I'm going to trust your instincts on this one. I just hope you're right. For both of our sakes. Let me know if you find anything. We're good. You may begin. I will, of course, have to make a few modifications. What kind of modifications? To find Taconian technology requires Taconian technology. If this Cyan Galavan modified his ships, then I must do likewise to yours. The galaxy is nearly infinite in size and complexity. This may take a moment. How long I found something. There you are. What is it? Galvin? Someone is using Taconian technology. I can't get the precise bearings, but it's located in the Palisades Cluster. I'll let the captain know. Rydic to Solano. I think Portal may have located Galvin. I'll be right there. I'm getting all kinds of interference. Almost impossible to lock on the energy signature. Where's he hiding? In the Palisades Cluster. Interesting. Can you lock in on the location? Not until you get me closer. Lieutenant Handar. Set a course for the Palisades Cluster. Aye, Captain. Well, I suppose I owe you an apology. You were right after all. That's what I get for questioning the advice of my first officer. You always have my back. No apology necessary. Your concerns were valid. Nonetheless, I should learn to trust your instincts, which were absolutely right. Nice work. Let me know if you find anything more. Will do. What's wrong? I didn't want to say anything until I was certain. But the reason for the interference is simple. There's a Taconian device on this ship being used to block the signal. Whoever planted it was exceptionally clever. They knew how and where to hide it. But they have underestimated my abilities. Engineering. Take care of the Taconian device. And I can find Galvan for you. It's designed to interfere with all transmissions. Or at least delay and confuse the effort to find Galvan's ship. Hold on. My understanding is that Takan technology requires a Takan to operate. Is there another Takan on this ship? The science could have someone on this ship doing everything they can to stop us from finding Galvan. Don't worry, I'll get this fixed. We're going to find that ship. Engineers would have found this device already if it wasn't well hidden. Better to rely on my tricorder. Hmm, there's a lot of noise in here. I should scan the device putting out the most radiation to filter it out. That's better. Most other radiation sources in here are well contained. There's definitely tetrametric radiation nearby. But even with the gain boosted, it's getting drowned out by other sources of radiation in here.
A little bit of harmless radiation leakage here, but enough to mask the tetrametric pulses. Easy enough to cancel out. There's still something drowning out the tetrametric radiation. I need to find it so I could filter it out as well. Jeffrey's tubes thump harmonics from all over the ship. I'll filter that out. There we go. I'm getting a clear tetrametric signal now. Found it. Excuse me, do you belong here? Commander Rydek. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know it was you. Paul. Calloway, right? Yes, I... You know, it means a lot that you remembered. What, uh, are you doing back here? I, I don't mean to pry, but... First officers don't usually go digging around engineering compartments. I was looking for you. Uh, under the console? Dropped my tricorder. But I do need your help. Have you seen anyone else in here recently that might seem out of the ordinary? Maybe someone who doesn't work in engineering. Not that I can think of, but I can ask around. I'm here almost all the time, but maybe someone else noticed something? Thanks, but... I'll talk to Commander Chobok about it. Okay. Well, let me know if I can be of any help. Well, I'll leave you alone already. Oh, come to think of it, that Hotari woman was down here earlier with Dr. Duvall finishing the last of the bioscans. Tylus? That would be out of the ordinary, right? Thank you. Maybe Tylus saw something. Tylus, can I speak to you for a moment? Of course. Is something wrong? There's something happening. I may need your help. This is important. How can I help? When you were in engineering with Dr. Duvall, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Or anyone? Not particularly. Why? I found this, hidden in a compartment down there. That's Taconian technology. Does that mean there's a Scion on board? But Dr. Duvall bioscanned everyone. Every deck, every crew member, I've seen the logs. She couldn't have been more thorough. Someone evaded detection and planted that device. Which would mean they've been with us this whole time. Watching, listening. All the more reason why we have to find them. It could be anyone. That includes both of us. You want me to get scanned? Better to know for sure, right? I'll admit, I was around the Scions as much as anybody. I would feel more comfortable if you did. I understand. Clear. Now it's your turn. Sure. Clear. Don't sound so surprised. You spend plenty of time with the Scions as well. You never know. Let's get to it. The search starts in engineering. Whoever planted the device most likely did it within the last few hours. So I'll start by running a scan, tracking everyone who came through engineering over the last day, in reverse order. This could take forever to sort through the number of people that were in engineering. Filtering for outliers. People who don't work in engineering. Mm, that helps. 
I'll filter out the duplicates. Now this is manageable. Cross-referencing this list with everyone who's traveled to Hotari. Let's see who's left. No, this can't be right. What? Of the people that went to Hotari and visited Engineering, it could only have been... Captain Solano. According to this, he was here while you went down to Delphi on four. Which would have been the perfect opportunity. And no one would question him. He's the captain. As much as I hate to admit it. Assuming it's true, it does explain why he was so opposed to getting help from Portal. And he made several trips to Hotari, so they had plenty of opportunity to target him. What happened when Dr. Duval bioscanned Captain Solano? That's just it. She never did. How is that possible? Something more urgent would always come up. There was nothing she could do. But performing a bioscan is the only way to be absolutely sure. That's not going to be easy. First thing I need to do is get this device to Portal. Be careful, and good luck. I'll need it. I found the device. Deference is gone. I have located Galvin's ship more precisely. He's in the Usonia system. So then it worked. This whole region was one of the most sacred for the ancient Takan. What many consider the birthplace of our civilization. See these comets and planetoids in the outer orbits? Based on their current trajectory, that's Galvin's destination. And legend tells us it's the location of what was once our largest arsenal. Not that we needed it in the late stages of the Empire, but it was there as a precaution nonetheless. Can you stop him? Cripple their ship somehow? I'm afraid they are too far away for my powers to reach them. We need to be much closer. And even then, they may have defenses against what I am able to do. If Galvin and the other Scions secure the arsenal, they will become extremely dangerous. My people had such power at the height of the Empire. The Takan were as gods, keeping absolute control over countless worlds. I must speak with them directly. However, the presence of this device is worrying. It's highly likely it was placed here by a scion hidden among your crew, and it is unlikely this interference device was the scion saboteur's only trap. If we reach Galvin and the saboteur cripples your ship, we will be at their mercy. Even my powers will not be able to protect us. Do you know who it is? They may well do more damage if left alone. Time is not on your side. I'm fairly convinced they bioformed Captain Solano. I knew there was a reason I didn't like him. That explains it. Bioforming was so rare in the time of the Empire that I am not able to detect if it has taken place. Proof of your claim is something you will have to produce yourself. Then, we have to bioscan him. I'll talk to Dr. Duvall. That's quite the claim. You told me you were worried about him. I never imagined this was what was wrong. I wouldn't be asking you if there was any other possibility. I would explain why Solano has been too busy for a bioscan lately. As the ship's doctor, you have the authority to declare him unfit to serve. If you're right, this is the worst case scenario. Challenging your own captain is a tall order. Are you sure you're prepared for this? If you fail, that's it. The end of your career. Maybe your life. I don't know if I would be on my own. But with your support, I'm sure we can do it. Now that smooth talking may come in handy. I'm in. But we can't pull this off with just the two of us. I technically have the authority to make Solano undergo a scan, but in reality, he can and will refuse to do it. 
We need at least another member of the senior staff to support your claim. Or this could all blow up in our faces. You better think long and hard about who you can trust. must be able to brute force limited bursts of warp output. Yeah. They won't get to wherever they were headed at this rate. They're just limping along now. So where does that put us? Maybe I can answer that. the ship's heading. They've changed course. Drastically. Looks like they're headed here. The Usonia system. They might stop there. Can we use the Zeldi's comms to signal your fleet? Our comm systems are locked. Grab hold! Going to tear it apart. Zeldi is still made by a Lydian hand. Spiral is to calm corruption. Hold. We just gotta stay safe until Starfleet can find us. Your people. Is there somewhere you go when you die? Life after death? No. On my home world, some people think they can cheat death in a way by joining with the Trill Symbiont. But that's not a life to me. Hmm. What about you? Is there another plane of existence for you? With every passing battle, as I get older... We only get one life to live. I'm not counting on anything coming after I close my eyes for the last time. Then you may never understand this, but please try. My people have a special journey. When Alidians die, we rejoin our comrades, family, and ancestors. On the parade grounds of Cirella? That is just one part of it, but yes. Death is not the end for us. So, even if some part of Itasca remains, by letting the Takan use her body, at best, we are delaying the inevitable next step for her. At worst, we are leaving her as a prisoner in her own mind. You want to save the transformed. So do I. Now that I've seen it happen, does it make me a hypocrite to say he has a point? What if we can't get them back? We can't leave them like that, right? I think Itasca would want to be released. You're allowed to change the way you think with new information. That's how it's supposed to work. The way you think and the way you feel don't always line up. I had a sister, a twin. It's very rare among the true. You never told me that. She was one of the youngest hosts to ever join with the Symbian. A sentient creature that lives in our body. It's considered a great honor. The Symbiont can bring centuries of knowledge and wisdom to the host. But sometimes, the Symbiont personality suppresses the host entirely. My sister was the closest person in the world to me. I knew she would be different after joining. But she drew more and more distant. The room we shared growing up was foreign to the both of us. 
And eventually, she, or whoever she'd become, cut me out entirely. So I left for Starfleet and swore I'd never go back. I couldn't stand the thought of seeing her. Someone who looked like my sister. You should try to see her again. When all this is over. Maybe things have changed for her after you've been away for years. I, I couldn't go back. Not now. You remind me of Itasca. I do. Bonds are not made by what runs through your veins, but the blood you spill together. Itasca was my family in that way. I want you to know there is nothing I won't sacrifice to win this fight. But if we're lucky enough to survive, I'd be honored if you'd count me as one of your tribe. As Itasca was. Even a couple of engineers like us? You are... many things. I'll take you up on that. Same here. They not cease this madness! What is this place? Is that... the Veskar? Another one of yours? Not anymore. They've corrupted it. Just like the Zeldi. Now there are two ships. Did this just get better... or worse? It certainly doesn't bode well for the crew of the Veskar. So many lives... stolen. We're really at the heart of this fight now. We just gotta figure out what we're gonna do about it. This doesn't look like the Ophelia. What are they doing here? You don't think they're just meeting their buddies? Maybe, but... Then why are their buddies here? Prepare for transfer. The storm! It's back! What happened? Hold on. I'm scanning. Tetrometric radiation is dropping. The Zeldi's dropped to minimal power levels. It's running off just the one warp core now. That means... They've sent the Cartabula to that other ship. Something wrong, Captain? No, nothing's wrong. In fact, I was just going to call for you. I'm needed down in engineering. The bridge is yours. Commander Westbrook, a word, please. I'm busy here, so let's make it quick. What's this about? The captain may have been compromised. I have reason to believe he's been bioformed and is now actively working against us. Come on. You can't be serious. Someone is sabotaging the mission. They planted a Taconian device in engineering. Captain Solano was in engineering while we were on Delphi Ardu 4, and he purposely evaded Dr. Duval's bioscan. That's ridiculous. I just spoke with him a few minutes ago. He was as normal as ever. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. I cannot stress this enough. Our lives are at risk. The mission is in jeopardy. I'm not making this up. And I suppose you have proof? I'm working on that. Of course you are. 
This isn't the first time you've trusted me. That consistency makes me want to believe you. If you go through with this, and you're right about Solano, you'll be the new captain of the Resolute. As First Officer, it is my duty and responsibility to protect the interests of the ship and its crew when the Captain has been compromised. I'll have your back. But you damn well better be right. Now or never. Captain Solano. Commander Rydeck, we need to talk about... Doctor? What brings you to the bridge? Just a bit of housekeeping. You owe me a bioscan, Captain. I don't have time for that right now. It will only take a moment. I can't put this off any longer. You can, and you will. All you'll find is that I'm quite reasonably under stress given the circumstances, and you aren't making it better. I'll find you in sickbay when I'm good and ready. Or, if you're gonna stand in the way of the mission, I can find you in the brig instead. It's merely protocol, Captain. All officers that touch alien soil have to be bioscanned. I know the protocol. It's not more important than chasing down these Taconian marauders. The crew looks to you for guidance, Captain. It may seem like a nuisance, but it would set the right example. What is this? We need you to comply with the scan, Captain. That's enough. Drop this. All of you. I'm giving you a direct order, Commander Rydek. Stand down and go back to your post. Now. Do not make me tell you again. I've been a starship captain since before you were in the Academy. I won't stand for this. I'd follow that order, if you were actually Captain Solano. Well then, there's only one thing left to do. Security to the bridge. Arrest Commander Rydek. Take her to the brig. On what charge? Conspiring with the enemy and mutiny. Captain, please reconsider. I've given my order. This is not Captain Solano. He's been bioformed. He's a scion. You're out of your mind. Commander Rydek has proof. He sabotaged our efforts to track Galvin with this. He planted it in engineering while we were down on Delphi Ardu 4. Lies! Perpetrated by the only Takan in our midst, Portal 6-3. He's actively trying to divide us from within. Captain Solano has refused to be bioscanned because he knows it will reveal he's a scion. Take her to the brig or I'll do it myself. Wait! Stand down! That's an order! What is the meaning of this? Everyone hold until we get answers. This cannot happen on the bridge of a Federation starship. I can prove I'm right if you just give me a chance. If I'm wrong, then I will face the consequences. If you're wrong, there's no coming back from this. I'm going to settle this once and for all.
Commander Rydick was right. Captain Solano has been compromised. He's been bioformed into a Takan. As the Chief Medical Officer of the USS Resolute, I am relieving Captain Zachary Solano of command. Take him to the brig. I don't know what to say. I'm stunned. We all are. Well, there's no going back now. You are, rightfully, the captain of the Resolute. And I'm with you from here on out. I need you to know that. Right now, more than anything, I need to know I can count on your support. Absolutely. You have my word. We have to come together to make this work. Whatever you need me to do. Set course for the Usonia system. Maximum warp. It's time to face Galvin. Yes, Commander. Sorry. Captain. On your command. Engage. They may not do much. Captain, that other Elidian ship is here. The Zeldi? We're outnumbered. Captain, your orders. Evasive maneuvers. Aye, Captain. The Veskar's warp engines are powering them. engines are offline. That must have been their goal. They didn't want us to chase the Veskar. According to my readings, they also took the Cartabula with them. They're not breaking off. We have to destroy the Zeldi before it destroys us. Diaz and Edsalar still over there? They'll need to evacuate. have it. They gotta know we're here. Hurry! You got it? Got it! Diaz to Resolute! We read you, Diaz. This is Ermot. It's good to hear your voice. Is Ed Salar? Is she with you? Everyone wants to know. Are you kidding me? I couldn't get rid of her. I don't doubt that, Petty Officer. Can you get us out of here? We can't transport you out while the Zeldi's shields are up. Our phaser fire won't even get through. Is there another way off that ship? We'll find a way. Whatever you do, you'll have to be quick about it. Because we can't give you much more time. We can't evade the Zeldi forever. Understood. Diaz out. We're gonna have to get out of here the old-fashioned way. Lydian ships have no escape pods. 
we can leave out that cargo bay we transported to before. But then there's the vacuum of space to contend with. Those freight containers. Maybe we could use those to make an escape pod? Is that even possible? We're gonna make it possible. Unless you have a better idea. Let's go. I've polarized the hull plating. That should allow us to take a few more hits. Enemy phaser impact dissipated. Heading, Captain? Attack pattern Delta. Target ventral power couplings. Aye, Captain. Zeldi, in range. Fire! Zeldi shields down to 82%. Doing damage, but they're hitting us right back. We'll run out of hull before we penetrate their shields. Perhaps I can be of assistance. I can modify your impulse engines to amplify their meager output and avoid more of their attacks. But I will need full access to your propulsion systems. That goes against dozens of Starfleet regulations. It's not a security risk if the alternative is destruction. To me, sir, you can take this beating and hope you can weather it. You put your trust in me. I've left everything behind for you. The least you can do is put your faith in me. Commander Ermot, give Bortle access to the propulsion systems. You're going to have the ship in your hands. Don't let me down. This will take a moment. ship has let up its fire. That gives us some time. All right. One of these freight containers should do the trick. Be quick. We need one big enough for all of us to fit inside. Something we can make airtight. Damn it. Not this one. for the big guy. No way this will hold up in a vacuum. Oh, here we go. This will work. That's great, but it's not airtight yet. No problem. We'll just seal it up. This container is extremely heavy. Even with the containment field open, it won't leave the bay quickly. I'll find something to accelerate our exit. Glancing blow. Very little damage. I cannot keep this up for long. Their phaser banks are recharging. Now's our window. We have to strike back. I agree. Their next barrage could be our last. Better make this count! Target their weapon systems. Take the teeth out of their bite. That could make them run. Just like the Veskar, we'd lose Diaz and Edzelar again. Hit their engines! We've already lost the Veskar. We need to protect ourselves first. Target their propulsion systems. I don't want them going anywhere. Targeting their engines. These will give us the push we need. Those are explosives. 
ride the blast right out here. All set. I'll set the containment field to deactivate, and then run back. We can detonate by remote. We'll need to seal the doors from inside the container once we do. Before all the air sucks out of the cargo. Resolute. I have the away team. Go ahead. We're about to exit. We see the cargo bay containment field is deactivated. Get that tractor beam ready. And you should know, the Zeldi is set to self-destruct. If we do enough damage to the Zeldi first, it'll prevent the self-destruct sequence from completing. We can't wait any longer. We have to fire. Captain, they're almost out of there. We need to act fast. Hold all fire! Get out of there, Petty Officer. Do it now! You heard her. Done! Ready? Detonate! Sensors. Tractor beam activated. Locked on and ready to fire. Fire! Tracked a transporter signal to the planetoid moments before the Zeldi detonated. Sidron. There's a Takan structure there. It's the reason they were here. It's the reason we are here. Now. I have to see it for myself. We'll go there together. 
I had a suit in his match. Is this the Takana arsenal Galvin was after? Legend says this region once held the sacred mysteries of the Takan Empire. Our greatest treasure, our most fearsome technology. I want a full security detail. Westbrook, Bredrosian, you're with me. Mr. Ermont, you have the con. Wait. <clears throat> You're not the first officer anymore. The captain is supposed to stay with the ship. I'm surprised Lieutenant Bedrosian didn't raise that first. I thought Captain Rydek knew what she was doing. That's the protocol. But it's also a captain's prerogative to break that protocol. I suppose it is. We'll deal with the first officer vacancy when we return. Until then, Mr. Ermont? Yes, Captain. Not that I can see. High alert, everyone. The enemy could be anywhere. Follow my lead. Let's make this a short mission. All right? That's the plan. Not well, your call to come down here. Still not sure I agree. But I respect the chain of command. Better to keep it simple. Sometimes the answer is staring you right in the face. Nicely done. Spread out. Let's see what we can find. And stay on high alert. We don't know where the Takan that beamed down here could be. You 
You will need my help, Commander. How so? Traversal here is trivial for a Takan, but only a Takan. When you come across a device you cannot use, merely call my name. Will do. Thank you. Do you know what this place was used for? It feels familiar, but I'm not certain. The Empire was vast. I did not know every corner of it. And much was built after I became a portal. However, Takan would not build such a place without something precious to protect. Whatever that is, we have to find it before Galvin does. Portal? What is that void down there? Space, folded upon itself. A fairly simple concept. For a Takan, perhaps? I advise against falling in. This pattern resembles the transporter device Petty Officer Maris used to escape the Resolute. Portal 6-3? You wish to make use of this device? It's a transporter of some kind? It allows Takan to move through space instantly a short distance. Very convenient. I will activate the system for you. Where does it go? I'm not sure. The markings here must be from after my time. There are only one way to find out. This planet, nor any planet in the Federation. Just... Why is this here? This is soil from the homeworld. Our capital system. This isn't an arsenal. It's a temple of the ancients. Sacred ground to the Takan. I took my oath as a guardian of the Empire in a place just like this. You cannot imagine the look of pride in my parents' eyes as they said goodbye forever. Sorry. 
This is the first I've seen of anything new from the Takan Empire in a very long time. I'm sure you're familiar with the feeling, that sense of loss. I thought I was ready for it, but it cuts to the core of your being. I totally understand that feeling. It's unavoidable and inescapable no matter what you do. Yes, it's that distant but familiar feeling that's forever just out of reach. Can you use this to find out more about what Galvin is after? The information's encrypted. I can only discern that it's a warship. No. It's the Aphelion. Perhaps the most powerful Taconian ship ever built. I can't access the full file, but looking through the ship's schematics, it appears to be equipped with some sort of experimental, highly advanced transporter technology. Transporter technology? For what? Captain, you better come see this. of it, I'd say someone left in a hurry. Probably right around the time we showed up. before in the other vault and if all of those are the same as this then there must be hundreds of millions if not billions all that remains of the Dakon civilization distinct person encapsulated in crystalline form preserved for all eternity you thought this was an arsenal and in a way, you're right. This is how they rebuild the Takan Empire, and bioform billions of innocent people. That seems to be the case. What you have to understand is, these life forms were preserved for the benefit of the Takan civilization, as a means of safeguarding the health and well-being of any Takan. Should they fall prey to illness or injury, they were never intended to be used for this purpose. There you are wrong. This was always their purpose. To restore the glory that was lost. Congratulations on your first victory in battle, Captain Rydek. You killed a great many of my compatriots, some that I've known for millennia. Are you proud of how much death you've caused? Each Takan life is precious, irreplaceable. Centuries of knowledge and culture lost with each one you murder. I was protecting my crew. It's regrettable to take any life. But when someone threatens galactic civilization, Force is the correct response. And I suppose it worked. For now. Thankfully, I don't have to convince you of anything. We'll all be on the same side soon enough. You can't just bioform whoever you want. 
not without a fight. Ah, but that's just it. There won't be a fight. In fact, most won't even know what's happened. One minute you're standing there as you. The next, you're standing here as one of us. He's talking about mass transformation. That's what the Aphelion was built for. The transporter. It'll reconstitute your DNA and bioform you into a Takan in the blink of an eye. This is what they'll use as ammunition. In a manner of speaking, yes. Of course, that's the simple version. But the end result will be the same. You're talking about a crime against sentient life on a mass scale. Or an evolutionary process where the strongest and most capable survive. The Aphelion is on its way here as we speak. Now it's only a matter of time. You can't delay that which is inevitable. Which makes your next decision fairly simple, brother. You are, after all, a portal. I am. Your sole purpose is to serve as a guardian of the Takan Empire. But you stand here surrounded not by your fellow Takan, but by members of the Federation. By people who deny our fundamental right to exist. You swore an oath to protect the Empire. And I can only assume that's why you're here. There is only one true Takan here, and that's Portal. You're a scion, a disgrace to the memory of the Takan, brought back through unnatural means. I only tolerate your presence so long as you continue to amuse me. Which side are you on? Captain Rydak, long-range sensors suggest a massive spacecraft approaching in the distance. The time has come. I hope we speak again, brother. Estimated time to contact, six minutes and counting. We can't stay here. We have to get back to the ship. And we have to preserve these souls. We must take them back to your ship. Those crystals are ammunition to be used against us. We have to destroy them. Bombard the site from orbit. I'll decide once we're safely aboard the Resolute. Forda transport. You have to hear me out, Captain. I've always stood by you. But if you bring those... things on board, I'll have no choice but to resign. If they're taken to the Earth, they will be forced into new bodies, brought back to life in a way they never asked for. They're not living beings, but they're still dangerous. And if you don't make decisions to protect us, we're gonna end up like Solano. You, me, the entire crew, we're all next. Two minutes and counting. It's headed straight toward the vault. The Aphelion is coming into view now, Captain. On screen. Mind you, those life forms are to come. 
not science, to cop. They're not your enemy. Right or wrong, history will judge you for this moment. Transport the storage crystals aboard the Resolute. Did I hear that right? That's an order. The storage crystals are on board in our cargo bay. Thank you. I won't forget this. I hope you realize what you've done. We don't need another captain who's gonna risk our lives just to feed their ego. This ship and this crew come first. Lieutenant. She has to hear it. We need Portal on our side. I'm not going to jeopardize that when I don't have to. So you jeopardize the rest of us. And to think. I used to look up to you. The Aphelion is targeting us, approaching rapidly. They hit us with that bioforming ray, and it's over. Maximum warp, get us out of here. Where, Captain? Anywhere but here, now. Thank you. I'm not sure one of my kind would have done for you what you did for me. I did not expect a show of mercy. I hoped, but you could have just as easily left me to my fate. I didn't do it for you. I did it because it was the right thing to do. I don't understand it, but I'm glad you did. Now that we're safe on your ship, I think you were right to bring her. Things seem a little different now than they did in the heat of battle. There's more than one way to deal with messy situations. Just because we're back on the Resolute doesn't mean we're safe yet. Look, this is good. Don't lose sight of that. surprises you. But your shoulders separated. If you come with me to sickbay, we can get you fixed up in no time. Uh, thank you. I'll find you afterwards. You two, check in at your stations. This thing isn't over yet. Pod. Not that I want another ride like that anytime soon. You're really making us proud out there, Diaz. The lower decks don't get a lot of glory. Well, I'm just getting started. Hey, Diaz. Yeah? Did you see our people over there? Miranda. Kapoor? Hauser? We saw Miranda and Kapoor, but they're bioform. And as far as I know, there's no way to undo it. That means they're not our friends anymore. If they attack us... We'll have to stop them. 
matter what it takes. Yeah. I, I guess we have to be ready for that. I can't believe it, but I'm actually looking forward to seeing Chobok. Not that I'd expect this kind of welcome from him. But I can just imagine the look on his face. Oh, come on, he's gotta give us some credit for all we've done. We'll see. Then again, if he doesn't, that's just Chovak being Chovak. I can't believe it! You evaded the Takan, ejected their warp cores, and lived to talk about it! That about sums it up. They're gonna be teaching this at the Academy for years to come. I mean it. Everybody's gonna learn how you pulled it off. Well, what we did... You can't just teach that. <laughs> Maybe not, but I'm sure they'll try. I heard about Belle. Is Miranda... As far as we know, she's still out there. Well, I know Captain Rydek will do her best to get her back. Hold on. Rydek? What about Captain Solano? He was turned into a Takan. Rydek had to take over. She's a hell of an officer. But none of us have been up against anything like this. No one has. Not in half a million years. We'll just have to step up and work that much harder to help Captain Rydek. It's gonna take all of us. <clears throat> Talk to you later. It is agreeable to see you again. Is that so? It was by no means a certainty that you would return to duty here. No, it was not. But it was my sincere hope you would. Just agreeable? That's all you got? After we were lost, going who knows where, and almost didn't make it back. And yet, here you are, back with us once again. You should know your absences left engineering terribly shorthanded. During your sojourn, this department has fallen unacceptably behind schedule. On both regular and irregular duties. There's been a whole lot of irregularity going around. I gotta admit, it's a little flattering that this place went to hell so fast without me. So, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. I believe factors other than your absence were also to blame. Normally, I would assign you to one of the many pressing repair tasks. But, given your experience on board the Zeldi, I have suggested you join the senior staff briefing as we determine our next course of action. You can commence your maintenance shift afterwards. I tended to an Illidian earlier. Major Sarlet Arminta. Ah, yes. I met him at the negotiations. I never would have imagined I'd be here, on the same ship, working together with our oppressors. But now that I am, I can imagine a future where the Hotari and Illidians are no longer enemies. I always hoped for peace, but it seemed so far away. Peace is often fleeting. If there's a chance, you should take it. Peace with our former enemies may be hard for some to accept, but it's what my people need. Well, that's coming along nicely. Thank you, Tylus. I'll take it from here. We're almost done. I have to brief Ambassador Spock in a few minutes. Ambassador Spock can wait. You have some fences to mend. Personally, I'm against the needless destruction of innocent life forms. So I'm glad you transported the Taconian crystals onto the ship. But Lieutenant Bedrosian obviously feels otherwise. And right now, you need the full support of your bridge crew. Being an effective leader requires trust. But an issue as divisive as this can create discord. I still need and value contrary opinions. I don't want everyone agreeing with me when they feel otherwise. 
Oh, you'll know when Lieutenant Bedrosian doesn't agree with something. She's not shy about making her opinion known. It's been a chaotic last few days for everyone. You need to name a new first officer in preparation for what's coming. You'll have to work to regain Lieutenant Bedrosian's trust, but if she's removed from consideration, it comes down to Westbrook or Ermot. Obviously, there are pros and cons with each, but ultimately, the decision is yours. Commander Westbrook has seniority and was hoping to be Captain Solano's first officer. Ermot has the knowledge and experience that makes him more than qualified. You really couldn't go wrong with either of them. At the moment, I am leaning toward selecting Commander Westbrook as the new first officer. That would be an excellent choice, considering your history. The crew would respect the fact you chose someone likely to challenge your opinions and present a different point of view. You're as good as new. Thank you, Dr. Duvall. Always nice to have a captive audience. You really shouldn't keep Ambassador Spock waiting. Captain. I'll meet you inside. I'm here to officially tender my resignation from the crew of the USS Resolute. I cannot in good conscience continue to serve aboard this ship, not while the interests of the enemy take precedent over the safety of the crew. Lieutenant, we both know how much we need your help and expertise for the coming conflict. I have no one to replace you. I understand, Captain, and I apologize, but my heart is not in it any longer. And to stay would be a disservice to us both. My door is always open if you change your mind. I appreciate that. We'll have Ambassador Spock via subspace shortly. Thank you, Mr. Armand. I'll notify Lieutenant Bedrosian we're about to begin. That won't be necessary. Petty officers Diaz and Edsalar have first-hand experience with our adversaries. I thought it advantageous for them to join this briefing. I understand this is unusual, but I trust you have no objections. Talk about moving up in the world. Not that I'm surprised in the least. These are unusual times, Mr. Chobak. In all seriousness, what Diaz and Edsalar accomplished aboard the Zeldi is nothing short of remarkable. They're both to be commended, not only for surviving against incredible odds, but for helping our efforts against these Scions. You know, Carter deserves most of the credit. None of us would have made it without his help. We'd all be bioformed by this point. Well, I could say the same thing about Edsalar here. She deserves as much of the credit as I do. It's like a mutual admiration society. Ambassador Spock is ready for you. Put him through. Captain Rydek, your recent change in station certainly warrants mention, and I trust you to faithfully execute your expanded duties. Right now, we must keep our attention on the clear and present danger that lies ahead, the Takan and their warship. The closest populations are the Hotari and Elidian systems, and they are likely the first targets for mass bioforming. After that, lies Federation space. I have advised Starfleet Command to send an impromptu battle group to intercept and assist you, but that will take time. You are our first line of defense. And with our shield algorithms compromised, we are at a great disadvantage. Of course, you know that as well as I do. I'm glad to hear the battle group is en route, Ambassador. With what we're up against, we're gonna need all the help we can get. And you will have it. Remember, our strength is drawn from our ability to work together towards a common goal. Have we made any progress in finding a way to defend ourselves from the Aphelion's bioforming weapon? Currently, our shields will not protect us, but I am compiling all of the information the away team gathered on the Zeldi and cross-referencing it against our own, as well as Portal 6-3's methods. The away team is sitting right here. They survived without getting bioformed, so we know it's possible. So, what's the secret? How do we defend ourselves? Is there a weakness we can exploit? 
Something we can do to avoid getting bioformed. Well, as simple as it sounds, the best thing to do is to not get caught. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or the whole ship. We avoided the Takan as much as we could. But we saw the bioforming, and there's not much you can do. I found something that might help. It's too soon to say for sure, but... We've had some promising indications that Deridium can delay the bioforming process. Deridium? It's not a cure. It's not going to bring anyone back we've already lost. But Deridium is a cell stabilizer, so it has the potential to slow down the onset of physical and mental changes, if not entirely prevent them. And it might be the only ship in the fleet with this much Deridium on hand. In fact, a lot of ships wouldn't have any. You say that it slows the process, but this doesn't actually stop the Takan from taking over, does it? Correct. I can't be 100% certain, but it appears this is only a short-term solution. Also, it requires a much larger dose to be effective. We don't have enough Deridium on board to protect the whole crew. We barely have enough to protect everyone in this room. Sounds like it won't do us much good, then. The use case I'd suggest is that buy a little time for an officer or a small group to complete a task or mission. But it has to be taken at the moment of exposure to the bioforming mechanism. Prepare a delivery method for this remedy. That raises the question, what is the mission? Assuming the Aphelion uses shields of some kind, I don't expect it will be easy to bypass their defenses. We may not be able to block the Aphelion's attack either. But if they do strike, we know their weapon uses transporter technology. We might be able to backtrack their signal path. Like we did to evacuate Captain Rydeck from Tau. Exactly. We could send an away team onto the Aphelion. So we could destroy it from the inside. I'm not exactly sure how, but that's the idea. So it's like jujitsu. We use their attack and turn it against them. That's the idea. We'll keep thinking on it. I'd rather not have to take a direct hit to punch back. There might be some other way we can turn their strength into a weakness. We'll need to prepare a boarding party, if it comes to that. Petty officers Edsilar and Diaz are the logical choices to lead any away mission to the Aphelion. They have already crippled one enemy ship. If anyone can do so again, it is them. This isn't like the engineering mission that took you to the Zeldi. Do you really have some special insights that a tactical team wouldn't? Doesn't the fact that we're here speak for itself? Just surviving won't be enough this time. We found that only a Takan can operate their technology to its fullest. So, unless we want to try to do this with one hand tied behind our backs, we're definitely gonna need an assist from this portal guy. I like that even less. Like it or not, that's the truth. Yes. Portal should be part of the away team. There's no question in my mind. If this is the necessary course of action, I support it. I will compile all the latest data on the tricorders, just in case. In the meantime, I want you working on ways we can combat the Takan tech. Shields, weapons, anything we can use. Yes, Captain. Anything else, Ambassador? I know this matter is in capable hands. Hold the line as best you can. Help is on the way. Thank you. We're at our best when our backs are against the wall. Now's our time to show what we're made of. Thank you, Petty Officers Diaz and Edzalar. You're dismissed. While we have a quorum of senior staff, there is a procedural element we need to take care of. The resolute command codes must be transferred to Captain Ryak. For control of the ship. Of course. Computer, transfer all command codes to Captain Jara Ryak. Voice authorization, Ermot, Echo 4 Lima. Voice authorization Duval, Beta, 2, Yankee. Voice authorization Westbrook, Alpha 7 Tango. A 
Awaiting your authorization, Captain. Voice authorization, Rydek. Charlie. Three. Whiskey. Captain's codes transferred. The updated command structure is incomplete. Please designate a new first officer. Who is the new first officer? Please designate a new first officer. It is an honor and a pleasure to name Commander Westbrook as my new first officer. Thank you, Captain. You made the right choice. Congratulations, Commander. It's long overdue. I know we've had our differences, but I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Computer, Commander Westbrook is the new first officer of the USS Resolute. Awaiting voice authorization. Voice authorization Westbrook. Alpha 7 Tango. Authorization is now complete. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Nicely done. I think that went well. Captain, could I have a word with you? Give me a minute. Look, I respect your decision, Captain. Commander Westbrook has seniority, and I can understand why you might have felt pressure to promote him. But what I can't understand is why you would choose someone so clearly unsuited for the position. It's the very reason why Captain Solano chose you over him. Because he knew Westbrook as first officer would be disastrous. I won't argue with you about it. You very well might be right. But I had to trust my instincts, and that's what led me to Commander Westbrook. He may have been the expected choice, but that doesn't make him the best. Maybe I've had it wrong this whole time. But I thought we've had an excellent working relationship almost from the moment you first arrived. Yes, I was insulted when you didn't trust me with the information about Captain Solano being compromised, but... I've always supported you. Which is certainly more than you can say about Westbrook. He was always against you, especially with regard to Captain Solano. Look, I'll be honest. I can't do this without your help. You're one of the best officers we've got, and I need you by my side. Otherwise, we don't have a chance against Galvin. It's as simple as that. And I'll be there when you need me. Just like I always have. I don't understand. Give me everything she's got. It doesn't make a difference. Something is actively slowing us down. Keep trying. What's the situation in engineering? I can't raise them. The internal comms are down. It's the ionic interference. It's spiking again. If we reinitialize the central communications trunk, it should compensate. If I may, Captain. Communications are critical to ship operations. I should go take care of this. Go. I was hoping we could buy enough time until Starfleet could send more ships. But it looks like we might have to face off against the Aphelion sooner than we might want. If it's just us, I don't like our chances. We can't fight them on their terms. We have to be clever. I would let you escape so easily after taking what's mine? How pathetic and predictable. 
At least you can take solace knowing you'll be a far braver to calm than you were as a cowardly Koblia. Is it any wonder your people perished? If your every instinct is to run from a fight. You can talk all you want, but I'll never be Takan. Never will be here sooner than you think. We both know I hold your fate in the palm of my hand. That I could crush you in an instant if I so desired. And as much as I'd like to, you have another purpose to serve. As one of us. Red alert! Handart, get us out of here! They were targeting the crew, not the ship. Captain, we have to respond. Hit him in the mouth. What are your orders? Fire photon torpedoes. Target the source of the beam. The Aphelion remains undamaged by the photon torpedoes, Captain. And its shields are fully intact. It's too powerful to take head on. Damage report from the lower decks. I still can't raise them, Captain. Could be that the system's down. Well, that was the Takan bioforming ray. And there's no one left down there to respond. The Takan may already be on this ship. No way of knowing how bad it is yet. Where's Ermont with the internal comms? Comms appear to be coming back online. System reboot in progress. I'll keep trying to reach him. Good. Here are your new tricorders. Now go, get to the transporter room.
Transport in room one. You're coming with us? A security officer told me your funeral, which I gladly accepted. These are concentrated iridium doses. You need to take the dose as soon as you're exposed for it to be effective. Hell, take it right before if you can get the Decon to whip while you do it. I'm having trouble locking onto the transporter path through the interference. Done this before. I have to align the transporter with the tetrametric signature. Tunnel through the shields. There's a problem. We don't have enough power to make the jump. I might be able to divert power from Stand the side. The signal is now resolved. I couldn't let you fumble about any longer. Time is running short. That's great. You must be Portal 6-3. Yes, Guardian of the Tacon Empire. I'm Carter. Uh, engineer of the Starship Resolute. We're right behind you. Do us proud over there. Ready to transport. On your order. Energize. It's almost a shame we have to scuttle it. The galaxy has never seen a ship like this. And it won't see one ever again. It is beautiful. I'll give you that. Resolute, come in! We're losing cohesion. I'm gonna try to use my tricorder as a pattern enhancer. They didn't make it. We don't have time to mourn. We have to get to the Cartabula and disable it. Hopefully before the battle group shows up. It's served up for the Aphelion's next meal. I am... saturated in Taconian power readings. I... can't feel the source just yet. This way. I can't reach anyone. At least not on the lower decks. It's like they're all... gone. Calm systems seem to be operational again. That bioforming ray may have transformed dozens of crew members on the lower decks. This ship could be swarming with resurrected Takan. It's only a matter of time before they come to their senses and take action. 
which means we have a narrow window of time to cut them off before. Actionable information. How many have been affected? Can this be contained? Send a team to investigate and assess the situation and have them report back immediately. I'm sending a team to investigate right now. And what happens if some of the bioforms manage to escape? How should the crew engage them? Or should they? We don't want suspicion to run rampant. We should be cautious. If a situation arises, I want phasers set to stun. Of course. I'll let the crew know to proceed with caution. Have we heard anything from Commander Ermot? No. And he's been gone for quite some time. The comm system he went to investigate. It's near the affected area. Commander Ermot. Commander Ermot, can you hear me? Computer shutdown initiated. According to this, it was initiated by Commander Irma. What? The central computer core will shut down in 10 minutes. We'll lose all critical ship functions. It can only be overridden by the captain at the core itself. With me. up there. Computer 
shut down. to kill me. I was only acting on orders. I didn't mean any harm. You know we'd rather have you with us. We can make a deal, right? Come to terms. Awaiting captain's authorization. Computer termination sequence still in progress. Cancel computer shutdown. Voice authorization, Rydek. Charlie. Three. Whiskey. Termination sequence canceled. <sighs> These are the arteries of power coming from the cotabula at the heart of the Aphelion. I can feel it coursing through my own body. Look there. I cannot move as freely inside this ship. Those emitters are why. If they were deactivated, I could travel past this chamber without setting foot in it. Only Takan can use Takan technology. How do I turn them off? Place these on the emitters. It will suppress their effect. The guards none the wiser. Got it. I'm coming too. If we both get caught, it's over. If it's just me, you can try again after I fail. Well then, don't screw it up. Got it. Is someone there? Nothing. Back to work.
go. Here. Delvin should destroy them and be done with it. There are many more worlds to bioform. We do not need this woman. Get out of here. More emitters. Guess we can't teleport the rest of the way. That craft can take us to the main power chamber. No way we can make that jump. When I was younger, maybe. Huh. This might control that craft. Portal, a little help? I should be able to bring it to us.
this thing's set to maximum stun. How are they getting up? Something's different about the Takan here. Stunning isn't an option. Get in! Ancestors, how do you stand with them? We've left them behind. I've seen it with my own eyes. They're not real to come. We were conquerors. Parasites. The souls I pushed your captain to spare will not be used for this end. You are the last real Takan. Don't let them tarnish that with what they're doing. Because if we don't stop the Scions of the Flame, they will be the legacy of your people. Never. That's the attitude. For the ship and the crew, not for you. I couldn't just sit in my quarters, waiting to get turned into a Takan. Your timing's perfect. We need your help now more than ever. Clearly. The only reason they haven't destroyed us is because we had bioformed Takan on the ship. That's why they're targeting our engines. If we lose the engines, we can't avoid the bioforming ray. Brace for impact! They're here! We're being hailed by the USS Titan! Put them through. Sorry to keep you waiting, Resolute. 
got here as fast as we could. Looks like you've got your hands full with this monster. We're damn glad to see you, Captain. We could use all the help we can get. I told you I'd be here. So, what are we up against? No. It's happening again. We have to warn them. Open a channel to all Starfleet ships immediately. Starting emergency transmission. This is Captain Jara Rydek of the USS Resolute. The ship we're fighting is armed with a bioforming ray that can transform your entire crew instantaneously. Avoid being hit at all costs! And remember, they have our shield algorithms, so take preemptive evasive action. Destroy that ship. Otherwise, it won't be long before they're coming after us. They could all be to come. Or none of them. We can't assume anything yet. And we can't afford to be wrong. I can't attack another Federation ship. I need alternatives. Full impulse power. Take us in for a closer look. Aye, Captain. Starfleet ship. The Takan have it. Shields at full power. Shields are holding up against their attacks. But they won't for very long. Fire phasers! Firing. Damage reported in astrometrics. Handar, evasive maneuvers. Get us out of here. Aye, Captain. Don't worry, Resolute. We've got your back. Their weapon systems are offline. Now's our chance. Finish it. We can send Galvin a message. Let him know exactly what he's up against. And that we're willing to fight to the very end. Take out their engines. Fire when ready. Targeting their engines. Commencing fire. Now. Just have a shot. On our way. Full impulse power. Aye, Captain. Target the bioforming ray. Fire photon torpedoes. Firing photon torpedoes. Trying to re-establish. Power levels are dropping all over the ship, but our engines are still running strong. This is what happened to the Enterprise. They're draining our energy. We're caught in it, too. I hope the away team is having more success than we are.
strike at the heart. The Cartabula. I can feel the energy. Don't get too used to it. We're gonna take that thing down. wide enough to get through. Well, is it wide enough? No, but I can see the cartabula. What about now? Ah! I still can't get in. Stand back. I'll try again. it with a containment field from the Tricor. Oh! I don't think we can crowbar our way in. It takes a con to do it. Carter, 
I could have killed you both. Easily. But the part of me that is still Miranda won't let me. She compels me to bring you into the fold. I will make you one of us. Trust me. This is the best outcome you can hope for. Miranda wouldn't want that. You don't know her like I do. Join the flame. started.
I can read it. What is this? Who are you? Tell me now! You're talking to the guy that's in charge. Pack down while I work. Carter, you're kind of scaring me. It's okay. I'm still in control. Reach the Cartabula. That's great. Are you all okay? Yeah, we're inside. That's what matters. Bioform ships at bay, but they can't hold them off forever. I'm getting remote telemetry from the away team tricorders. I recognize that anywhere. Our warp core resonant frequency is one of the readings. They're bleeding us dry. But they're not just taking our power, they're routing it through the cartabula. That's the Resolute's warp core resonant frequency. And these others? That frequency matches the Titan's warp core resonance. These two are the Kimball and the Lowell. They're both Steamrunner class. Same engine platform. They're just tuned a little differently. I must be getting information from the bioforming, but this warning, it means that it's struggling with the power stacked up at close frequencies. The Cartabula can't handle the dissonance? Maybe. This is Westbrook. Are you reading these Starfleet engine signatures? We are. You need to see this. The Steamrunner class frequencies are causing problems for the Aphelion's energy source. Sending visuals now. They're vulnerable. We have to use this. You can break a wine glass if you play the right note loud enough. Sir? The Takan are so arrogant. They're letting us right in the front door with this energy drain. We can tune our warp core output to those frequencies. Get all our ships to do the same. Push it to maximum levels, and we might be able to crack the wine glass, the cartabula, and take their ship offline. There is merit to the theory. But if we attempt this, it would preclude any other course of action. It'll work. It has to. If this is going to succeed, we'll need all Starfleet ships to pitch in. We aren't alone anymore. We need to leverage that. I will create a high-energy static warp shell. We'll need the away team to guide us to the right frequency. We read you, Resolute. You're putting a lot of faith in us, Captain. 
That's a hell of a plan. We don't want to let you down. I've got faith in you, and the rest of this crew. Now let's give them hell! Yes, Captain. I found an ejector team for the Cartabula. So we can disengage him, just like we did with the Zeldi's warp cores. Yeah, but... It'll only activate if this thing gets completely overloaded. So we gotta take it right up to the edge of destruction. We are increasing the warp core resonant frequency now. You can't do this. You'll destroy everything I've waited for. If that thing wants to take over, it's going to have to go through the both of us. And I'm not going to let that happen. You hear me? I'm gonna fight it right along with you, Carter. You can help me get the job done. That's the fight that matters most. But it's not the only one. Is something wrong? No, no, we're, we're fine. Do you see our output frequency changing? We do. What is the impact on the Aphelion systems? Keep it up, Resolute. It's starting to work. The bigger they are, the harder they'll fall. Inertial dampeners are failing. Warp output at 85%. They're taking the bait. Now we need the rest of the fleet. Open a channel to anyone left on our side. Opening a channel. This is the Resolute. We're sending instructions to all ships to output maximum warp power at the designated frequency. We believe this will disable the Aphelion. We don't know that. All we know is that it'll siphon off our energy much quicker. You're leading us to disaster. Are you out of your mind? That has given them exactly what they want. You can't just expect us to turn belly up. Our strength in Starfleet comes from our ability to work together. Especially when everything is on the line. I can get behind that, Captain Rydek. We're adjusting the Titan's warp output to match the Resolutes. I suggest the rest of you do the same. Falling in line. This is the Takahashi. Adjusting our engines now. The tabula. It's compensating. Counteracting our interference. But some of these other frequencies are causing spikes too. I'm gonna find a new target range for the resonance. Try this out. Here. This one's hitting the hardest. If they all converge here, it'll provide the maximum disruption to the Cartabula. Got it. We want to overload this thing, push it to the brink, but not past it. You sure about this frequency? If we go too far, we won't just be destroying the Cartabula. We're going to take a lot more with us don't want to be responsible for that. I'm sure. I bet my life on it. It's all our lives. Sending data to the Resolute. Way team has sent us an updated target. Sending it to engineering now. We are now running our core at 105% of recommended capacity. If we try to meet that frequency, we will generate a harmonic imbalance of our own and risk a warp core breach. 
I must warn you, these are precisely the engine conditions that Captain Solano's experiment brought about. A runaway reaction is a dangerous possibility right now. We can't afford to start second-guessing ourselves. If it doesn't work, we're dead anyway. So give me what you've got. Consequences be damned. Aye, aye, Captain. Gonna eject. We have to disengage the cartabula manually. We lit this fuse. We gotta make sure it doesn't go off the wrong way. If we can pull hard enough on those levers, it'll dislodge this thing. Shutting down. Returning warp reactor to nominal output levels. The Takan are running off reserve power now. I saw what you did. The sacrifice you made. Radiation levels are spiking. It's coming from the Cartabula. He must have damaged it. Didn't get it out before it fractured. Our work here is done. Let's get out of here. <coughs> Three to beam back to the Resolute. Can't lock on. Our transporters won't cut through the interference. We can't stay here. We're not getting away in that thing. 
There. Maybe I can use this to get us out of here. I don't know if it can get us back to the Resolute, but we have to get away from here. Everybody on! Radiation's lower here, but still too high for us to stay on this ship. This is good, but we can do better. <coughs> and soon, I hope. We gotta get all the way to the Resolute. That thing is down, but not up. We'll handle the stolen Federation ships, but you need to get a crippling shot on the Aphelion. A direct hit to its bridge will bring it down. I can take us real close, Captain. Skim the hold of that thing where it can't get a clear shot at us. Or... Or... I can weave us through the battle. And hope we don't get caught in the crossfire. I don't want to get too close to that thing. We can't take much more fire, Captain. Take us through the battle. Get us a clear shot on that bridge. Aye, Captain. for a shot at the bridge. Photon torpedoes armed and ready. <coughs> Break off this attack, or I will be forced to eradicate you. The Aphelion is still filling with lethal amounts of radiation, but it seems to be contained within the ship, for now at least. They have comrades on that ship, both living and waiting to be reborn. We're going to die in here if I don't care. Never submit to your federation. We are taking our rightful place as rulers over this galaxy. Radiation poisoning is a terrible way to go, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can render aid to your crew. No, we've crossed the eons to get here. I won't stop now. Fire salvo! I can't let you do that. Get on. Damn it. I can't hold on to it. I have to make manual adjustments to enhance the signal pattern from here. What do you mean? I'm not gonna make it out. No way. We're all leaving together. We've been through too much to split up now. We don't leave people behind. Got it? I know we're the same rank and all, but I am ordering you to go. Don't waste this. Please. You said that we'll be stuck here. Give him to me, and I will save us, not them. Stop it. <laughs> What's happening? It's an internal struggle, and he's losing. Not like this. It's the Takan. In my head, it's trying to keep me from sending you back. There has to be a way for you to... There isn't. The time is now.
The away team has beamed back. We're in position and ready to fire, Captain. Target their bridge. Please, Mojita. Target the ship. Pummel it to space dust. Like we did to so many others who dared to confront the Takan Empire. Fire. All decks secure. We have the bioformed on board, fully contained. The Starfleet ships under Takan control have signaled their surrender. Good work, Captain Ryder. Next time I need some backup, I'll know who to call. I trust you won't have a problem with that. Thanks, Captain Riker. I owe you one. Yes, you do. But who's keeping count? Captain, we're being hailed. It's the Aphelion. On screen. <coughs> the radiation. We... <coughs> we won't last much longer in here. Please, we surrender. We need your help. Please, people support your ship. I know what they've done, Captain. But we can't let them die. They're our enemies today. But who knows what they could become. You already offered help and they turned you down. Tried to destroy us. Why reach your hand out to them again? It's what we do. This is the fate they've chosen. Leave them where they are. We can't do that. <coughs> we don't have much time. We submit. I don't, I don't know what else I can say. Please. We don't want to die. This is what separates us from them. The fact that we can make a gesture of peace, even after all our conflict. Set up containment fields in the docking bay and beam the Takan there. Crew of the Aphelion, shut down all systems. Lower your defenses and prepare to be transported. Thank you.
My first order of business will be to help reestablish the Hotari government and resume peace talks, genuine talks, with the Olivians. And after that? Who knows? I know I don't want to be queen. There's so much good I could do with just a fraction of your medical technology if I could bring it to my people. But I also want to see what else is out there. Maybe there's even a place for me in Starfleet. It would be hard to stay on Hotari forever. Not with all there is to experience, to learn. My devotion to my people doesn't mean I don't want to explore all the galaxy has to offer. When you're ready, Starfleet will be waiting for you. I'll even put in a good word at the Academy. Thank you. Perhaps I can serve on one of your ships someday. I wouldn't have it any other way. But there are pressing matters we must attend to before any of that. I can't thank you enough for all you've done. I'll see you again. Starfleet has granted me the privilege of conferring this upon you. Though I'm sure Captain Solano would rather have been the one offering this. You have acted dutifully and bravely through trying circumstances. I grant you the official rank of Captain. I believe a great many wonders lie ahead for you, Jara Rydek. There appears to be nothing I can stand in your way. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life. Victory. Peace. These things never come without a cost. For some, it requires putting aside centuries of enmity. For others, it takes facing complicated losses. To Carter. How do you say goodbye to someone who isn't really gone? <laughs> I thought I knew how to leave the past behind, but uh, I've learned a thing or two. And for too many, they had to pay the ultimate price. In time, history may forget their sacrifices, but those of us who were there never will. Now, all hands honor the dead. Captain Solano used to say that nothing ever stays the same. Entropy. It's the nature of the universe. As such, the crew of a starship can never stay the same. But while Entropy says that order inevitably gives way to chaos, this crew has only grown stronger. More cohesive and coherent. Bound by our shared struggles. And working together, helping each other, we're able to do more than we'd ever imagined. Some of our differences couldn't be resolved. But perhaps that too can change in time.
engage. Space, the final frontier. As we take our next steps into the unknown, the greatest insights that lie ahead are what we learn about each other. We might even surprise ourselves. And no matter what threats we may come upon or mysteries we face, we will not be shaken. We are stronger together. We are steadfast in our purpose. We are resolute.